Despite our hero's isolation at the high elven city of Hemoth Tirith, the world of Sidariel is rapidly running into turmoil. The northern sky reaches are said to be facing a blight while armies march north from as far south as Dagdagiel upon the Muldraean capital. Vain Gate, which is itself now under the rule of a regent council of nobles said to be the thralls of the Barakile envoys, Inquisitor General Vorbus Dal Renaz. A lot has happened since the notorious rogue Milford Brixton and his bunch plundered the Astorian vizier's burial chamber beneath Vain Gate, stealing a treasure ship from the Barakile envoy wizards, who in turn were stealing from the Vain Gate nobility. They left Vain Gate and headed upriver to the elven realm known as Tularathion. They have since sworn allegiance to the outlaw king, Galandal Bregan Arathani, on the Island of Shadows, and joined the servants of the Fox. They have delved into the Underdark, crossed the Underlock, skirted the Forge Gate, and had a run-in with the Black Guard in the wood elven home of Lithlian. Now they are in Gudale's homeland, the high elven capital, Hemoth Tirith, where the companions intend to rescue her adopted brother, Ren Talandarin, from his imprisonment within the Sufferance. An ancient, prison, an ancient prison complex said to be impenetrable. The sufferance is a prison like none other. Its now flooded foundations were laid down by the giants in the first age, and upon it, a mythal was constructed. A magical field which surrounds the complex's labyrinthine canals, walls, and ancient broken towers. A field which nullifies, banishes, or restricts all arcana within its purview, stifling spells, artifacts, and other magic not permitted within its bounds. Each inhabitant of this ancient magical jail is imprisoned, not in a cell, but instead upon a small, isolated, low-lying island, all of their own, cut off where they must toil to survive, where every crop is hard won, where good behavior earns privileges such as seeds, eggs, tools, and livestock to survive their hardships. It is upon such an island where Galandal Ren Talandaran, adopted brother of Gudale, that is to say the adopted brother of Joanna's cleric, also known as Dala, resides. And it is his freedom that our companions seek on behalf of their beloved Gudale. But breaking in or out of the sufferance is nigh impossible, a task never before accomplished. Besides this most dangerous task, the sufferance is said to house more dangerous beings too. Besides the political prisoners of the usurper king, a litany of innocents whose only real crime was to know too much, if the rumours are to be believed, the list of the damned includes drow warlocks, orc and war band leaders, an evil sorcerer known as Razak the Dwegar Seer, confirmed to have murdered hundreds of Banakayan dwarves, as well as some other dissidents of the Underdark. Bedtime stories for children as far away as Vanderhold mention the sufferance too. They speak of a terrifying and alien creature with many eyes known as Zargax, and a being known as the Mind Flayer. Under the stewardship of these mysterious Red Guards, once known as the Order of Barad Shah, the sufferance is said to be a place of angst, toil, and terror. A nightmare full of hopeless, damned souls, tortured by their slowly, ever-failing memories of past lives. And the monstrous guardians of the deep canals, the ancient broken walls and the ruined towers, the muddy banks, banks littered with petrified statues of those who failed to escape their madness, who simply gave up hope. For it is said that those condemned to the sufferance are condemned to madness, a madness that only the most stalwart ever survive, if not escape. The rest fall prey to the monsters of the deep, the basilisks that roam the shores, or worse, the ancient and invisible guardians themselves prisoners of the mythal, guardians whose elemental fury is said to be contained only by the ancient seals of the primal elves of the second age. Thus. With the aid of Ilanis, Lea, Firahel, Rector of the Sufferance itself, our companions hope now to find a way to gain access to poor Wren. Bear witness now as we return to the Vaingate Chronicles, for even as we speak, Lord Edrin Montcoff sits in his chamber alone, where he has been examining a strange crown, the last remains of a wraith destroyed by Gudale, Adric, and the now late Milford Brixton, 
who was to perish only minutes later. Turning it over in his old, plump human hands, examining the crown, Edrin has now seen how it drains colour from its surroundings, how it muffles sounds and exudes a peculiar quality that seems to extend from the shadow fell. Curiosity getting the better of him, Edrin has raised the crown now above his head and lowered it into place upon his brow. Welcome to the Main Gate Chronicles. I'm Russell Kirkby. I'd like to introduce you to Joanna Grotenhouse as Gudale Dala Talandaran, Barry Tahira as Orika, mm. Steve Austin as Leith Mistralath. Michael Bates as Adric Fogdar. Hello. And Max Easy as Lord Edrin Montcoff of the many names. Thank you for watching. Now I'd like to pass things over to uh, Michael, who's going to tell us a little bit about some other stuff. Hello. As he so, always does. As I, all, as I always do. So did you know that the, uh, the force in the oceans that turns things around is called the Coriolis Effect? There, I've told you a thing. That's a joke. That's a right. bad joke. But the, f the fact is real. Folks, imagine for a second that you have just been bludgeoned by two ogres that you tried to sneak up on and poison, and they caught you uh, elf-handed, as it were. Now, under those conditions, you would want to be healed, to be taken care of. Great. Maybe if you're lucky, you have a cleric on hand. Well, we live in a boring world, so there are no real clerics here. However, we have hospitals. We have things that can take care of people. And as always, we are collecting money to donate to the Ronald McDonald House through Gaming for Charity. So if you've got a few spare shekels uh, tooling around in your purse, a sack, maybe a pig tin, chuck it our way so we can do a little bit of good. And also, if you, lo if you love the mahi, maybe give us a, you know, a little bit of your shekels too. Everything goes towards uh, making the stream and the channel that much better thank you kindly thank you kindly and um good dale uh you're in charge of editing and controlling our uh, archives uh, how's that going this week um well because of lockdown and homeschooling it's going a little bit slower than i'd like but uh, it's still very enjoyable because i get to relive our finer moments right and then I get to remember, oh, I get to see everyone again on Friday. So yes. um, episode, I think, 26 is almost ready to go. Wow, cool. Yeah. Well done. Joe. Awesome stuff. Dear Joe, have you had any favorite moments? Anything particularly noteworthy that you want to bring up? The rarity <laughs> sticks out in the mind. Anything so, noteworthy? Sounds like you're fishing there, Michael. <laughs> Me? Never. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How dare you, man? <laughs> <laughs> there was a moment I watched, I think it was today, and how we're talking about Milford and, yeah, something about friendship. Oh, it was about, no, it was about Ren's sword. Yeah. And I said, oh, it becomes a friend. And you said, or a blade. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty cool. Right. <laughs> okay. Well, um... All things else being equal, are you guys ready to begin? Hell yes. Hell yes, he says. He says that. Yes, yes. Such, such casualty. Ca casualty? Ca casual. <laughs> Speaking of casualties, Speaking we of go casual to Edrin. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, speaking of Edrin, Edrin, you put big casualty. <laughs> so let's let us set the scene then, Adrian. You're sitting in your room, one of six rooms in the Daughters of Twilight complex in the uh, Tarsalus Temple at High Brook, or otherwise known as Hemoth Tirith. Um, in the Elven Realms, this is the capital city of the High Elves, Hemoth Tirith. Um, and the Daughters of Twilight complex, so they are um, a, a, an order of matriarchal. Um, elves, clerics, and paladins, essentially, um, who make up this order. Goodale is a member of this order. Um, and you're staying in this particular complex made up of six rooms with a courtyard in the center. And Edrin is in his own room. And uh, I'm imagining it's a little darker here. I don't know whether you've got candles Probably, or, yeah. or a lantern. How is it lit? One very low candle. 
one very low candle. And so you're sitting there. Um, are you are you looking at yourself in a steel mirror while you do this, or is this something? Oh no, nah. no, nah, it's just kind of on the bed. On the bed, absentmindedly, absentmindedly, turning it over in my hands. Right, and then finally, um, if we recall last episode, Adrian made a wisdom saving throw and placed yeah. the crown upon his head. Now. There are effects of this. Um, the very first effect is that Edrin's intelligence goes up by two points. Bingo, bango, bongo. The second effect is that his wisdom goes down by two points, making it much more difficult to pass that saving throw a second time um, in order to remove the crown. So. Um, does Edrin even want to remove the crown at this point? Because the first thing he's beginning to notice is that there are figures standing around him. Spectral figures. Dark shapes made of inky black shadows. It's just going to wait and see what happens. He's a little bit more interested and he wants to see what what happens if he kind of sits and watches them for a little bit longer you see that they are wearing ragged robes that seem to be billowing in the astral wind around you as you sit there surrounded by these figures and the landscape itself seems to just bleed out, like all the colour of the walls bleeds out till they become transparent and you're sitting upon this wide open plain. The sky becomes apparent to you and it is this broken purple and blue and black space. You do not see um, any of the moons at present or stars, just blackness and these colours that seem to refract above you in the various layers of astral mist. These mm. beings stand about you, six of them. I go up to one of them. So you stand? Yes, I stand. I go up to one of them wave my hand in its face. You can make a wisdom saving throw to do that, because mm. I suspect that this is quite terrifying. And... Natural one. I don't think you can move. I think you're too, too oh. kind of frozen where you are in terror. Like, you have the sense of vertigo at the idea that the whole world's physicality has been peeled away while you're sitting here. Right. At which point Edrin's just going to try rip it off his head. Okay, so now you need to make that wisdom saving throw. Um, which of course is minus two now that you've lost two wisdom. Yes. Uh, total of 30, 20. A dirty 20, wow. All right, you managed to take the crown off. And I'll just throw it. And even though I wasn't looking at it, I'm just going to throw it and it's just going to hit a mirror. Okay. Um, there's, there's only steel mirrors in the world. Glass is not a common thing. Yeah. So it might dent it a little. Right. Very good. And the crown crashes into this thing. Everybody else can make a perception check. Mm, that's a, a tasty, tasty 11. A tasty 11. 25. 25. Okay, Leith, you definitely hear the crashing sound. Uh, I'm, in the, I'm in the next room. I was um, trancing with, with Tozen at the end of the last that's episode. True, right? So yeah. that probably pulls me straight out. Right. And you, you have the sense of Tozen withdraw from, from your immediate presence as well. Um, I'll, I'll run to where it came from, because it sounds like it came from one of my 
Companions. Compatriots rooms. Right. Companions rooms. Yeah. Okay, so Edwin, you're sitting there when um, Leith comes bursting in. Oh, oh when it, when it, if it if it makes a big noise, Edwin's gonna dive for it. And all right. And try shove it under the bed. All right. That doesn't make a particularly loud noise. That's uh, twenty three for Ulrich's perception check. Goodell, you definitely heard this too. Yeah, po possibly fighting with Leaf, Leaf in the hallway to go right. see what it is. Right. While they're stooging in the hallway, it's really just everyone's <laughs> gonna s swipe it under the bed. Everybody got a, a, a like over twenty, except for Adric, basically for their perception check. Um, so the, yeah, so Leaf, Goodell, and Orica <laughs> all basically hear this. Orica, do you rush to the room too, or what are you doing? No, no, I know she's safe, so it's not my problem, but if they get in my road at the door, I'll just pick them up and put them aside and go in. <laughs> okay, so... Uh, when he just does that. Leith's the closest. Goodale, you're the next closest. Orica, you're last. So by the time you get there, Leith's already in the room. Okay. Um, Edrin, can you make an acrobatics check? Oh, geez. <laughs> to try and grab the crown and and essentially you're planning to hide it right? 13 yes 13 dive over to it and try okay, under so the bed leith when you you burst into the room um Idrin is laying on the bed uh kind of sweating um and trying to push something under the bed right now Idrin, I, I, are you all right what 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 happened i had a bad dream and punched the mirror goodness you, last time you, there was such a noise there was a, a an undead creature in your room why would you punch why? the mirror and I, there was something in my room oh yes that was when you were in the library there was there was something in my room yes yes that, in what, here what was in my room there's nothing here just us no but before apparently there was something in my room me have a look around and make sure. When you said I was at the library, there was something in my room. Barry yes, Cameron. it was some kind of undead thing. Oh, that's that's definitely nice. And and that's definitely not going to help me sleep. Oh. Uh, oh. Sorry. No, that's I not you good. Prior. Good to know. Um Right. Um Yes. But thank you for the um for the uh the care um um oh, sorry we got so distracted that's that's how that um bust of corlon got smashed ah i see right i just thought that was well, well they've been tough being silly Ulrika is looking around the room Ulrika is looking around the room is there anything Ulrika is likely to find in your room edrin that might be of any interest to Ulrika? Uh, books. Most of my stuff is probably on my in in our bag of holding. Right. Um, I, I, have, I haven't really it. depacked. Okay, Ulrika, how much of an investigation are you doing here? Are you like getting on your hands and knees and looking under the bed? Well, there were there were black things around before, so I'm making sure they're not hiding anywhere. Which things are we talking about? The the guy with the with the um, chain. Right. The I mean, they tie. could be hiding anywhere. So I'll lift up the bed and have a look and see if there's any hiding under there. Okay, oh my, right. he's quite strong. I'll make an investigation check for Erica. Um An eighteen, actually. Um, okay, so I think it's fair, Edrin. Do you think it's fair that he finds the crown under the bed? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, yes, he. it's definitely very close to, to... He hasn't thrown it onto the other side, but it's kind of right. in so the Ar middle Ar of Ar the bed. So kind of underneath. walks around the room, looks at, looks at a few things, picks up the bed casually and sees the, this crown on the floor. Oh, uh, there's nothing but a crown. Casual. Don't worry about it. Nothing else I'd, here. Just a crown uh, I, on the floor. I was wondering where that went. I must have dropped it in my sleep. It's... Is you that the crown? It, you want to pick it up? I can't hold bed all day. Okay, thank you. Sorry about that. 
is, is that is that the crown that we picked up under uh, under Vangate under in the? No, in the no, this is the one that was on. Um, uh, I believe it was a wraith that Goodale and and Adric killed. Oh, and just sleeping with it. Oh. Well, I was inspecting it, and then I think I dozed off. It's been oh. a very long day, so That's I think it's got true. the better of me, in can terms you, of. Can I put bed down now? Yes, of course. Thank you. Thank you, Ulrika. Very, very nice Does of you. Does anyone want to make a uh, an insight check on uh, Yeah, I will. Okay. 14. 14? Edrin, what do you think he gets out of you for a 14? I don't know. Do you want me to roll deception and, and find I think, out? I think that's a good, a good, mm. a good method. Don't be suspicious. Don't be suspicious. Eleven. Yeah, I think he beats your. Uh, yeah. Deception check. Something. Not funny entirely going. truthful. Yes. Not one hundred percent truthful. Yeah, something fishy about what he's saying. Leith's gonna sit down next to him on the bed and just look him in the eye and say, "I believe I know you, Mister Adrian. Hmm. Things are not right. Please, if there's something going on, please talk to me." Uh, it was a dream about um, an expansive, scary landscape, dark and all that. I think it got to me a little bit. What, was it related to this crown? Possibly. If it's the crown, I won't sleep with it again, if that's what you want. I don't plan on sleeping with it again. Uh, Anytime uh, soon. Okay. Should we perhaps put it somewhere safe? I think uh, the bag of holding would would be good, just for now. Me can just throw it very, away. Very Me well. Can throw it away. I think it'd be good to study if it was on an undead creature and is obviously having effects. We put it in the bag of holding for now, during the night, I, and I... then during the day, I'm able to look at it a bit more, and then we put it back safely. Yes, I, I agree with you, Adrian. I, I think it, sh it should be an item of study, but um, but but perhaps we don't have immediate access to it because it, it it does sound a little bit like it's having some sort of an effect on you. Yes. Meanwhile, Adric, where are you, and what are you doing? Uh, I think Adric's still going to be where he was when we finished up at last session. Uh, he was just outside enjoying a drink under the moonlight, just trying to de-stress. Very good. Okay. Which would, which would explain why he didn't hear the crashing or Does the yelling. Actually, yeah, that's true. Quite so. Okay, so you always trust the dice. The dice will tell the story. They will provide the conflict. I'm going back to get some more drink. Because drama is conflict. Or is it Gadale conflict? goes back to her room to get the uh, the bag of holding for Edrin. Okay. Turns. Okay, so <clears throat> eventually, Adric, uh, you're going to finish up that drink? Yeah, when the bottle's empty, it's like, well, there's nothing. Not easy to stick out here. Uh, Orica, you can, you, can, you can hold this. He's going to hand the bottle to him and wander, wander inside. Orica's <laughs> apparently inside right now. Did he come out to visit you? Yeah, he came out I to... I said I'm coming out. Oh, to... I see. I'm sorry. Yeah, I I'd finish with this lot. Okay. Who cares about a crown? Adric, um... Fogdar, can you make a constitution saving throw, please? I certainly can. Against alcohol poisoning. Alcohol poisoning. Can I uh, roll roll that with a uh, advantage because I have an advantage to poison damage? You have advantage, or you're immune. Uh, I have a, okay. My defenses. I have a resistance to poison, but I have an advantage against poison saving throws. Okay, so you can make a yeah with advantage. Yeah. Huzzah! Let's have a look at this dice roll. What are we getting here? Oh, 22. A 22. A 22. All right. Mm, no problem. Did it, did Thank Edric you, pick that up? Constitution. Did yes. Edric pick that up recently, Michael? No, Edric's always had it. Oh, okay. Yeah. What do you call this? You give me a drink and it's hardly got nothing in it. Oh, I just thought you'd enjoy yeah, what was left. Usually it's the dregs what, that are so strongest. So I can just breathe it in now? Well, hey, Orica, would you like to make a constitution saving throw? You do fortunately get plus six to this. 21. 
No problem. No problem. Alright, so you're fine. Well, I just thought you'd enjoy what, what, what remained. Even the scent is vaguely intoxicating. Oh, Bruxana. I'm afraid I uh, don't follow. Bruxana? Hey, ah. <clears throat> you don't want to follow. All right, then. <laughs> As you are. I'm just going to waddle inside. All right. Okay, so you go inside, and um, everyone's kind of clustered around the outside of Edrin's room presently, or inside in some cases. What's um, what's going on? Um, at Edrin's uh, outside Edrin's um door. They're putting something very, very special away. Oh, what's that? Lathers, Lathers um got uh something wrapped in like a. A shit, a bed sheet. Um, he's. I've just gathered up a bed sheet and wrapped the the crown in it and put it in the in the bag of holding. Well, while while Edrin's still holding it, before now, someone. Sorry, just a quick yes. quick note here. Bags of holding, as as discussed, anything that goes in must be named, in order to retrieve it. Yes. So. Um, crown of, as he puts it, in, he says, "Crown of uh, what was this called, Edrin?" Shadows. Very quickly before uh, Lee took it, um, and Adrian was still holding it, I wanted to oh. very quickly do something. Um, Adrian's going to drop it, let it roll under the bed, and as he goes to get it, he's going to use um, minor conjuration and conjure an inanimate object that looks exactly <coughs> like the crown and pull it out from under the bed. Wow, so that's a pretty elaborate deception, is it not? Yes. Okay, so this is going to be uh, sort of a... Uh, multiple stages like of, of deception, I think. I think this might take two deception checks, maybe three? Three deception checks. Steve, you're gonna make three uh, should we call them insight checks or these perception checks? Hmm. Is there such uh, thing as a deception saving throw? There is not. No. There is not. Um, it could be a wisdom saving throw, but it no, would it's... be it would be a charisma saving throw. Charisma saving throw, you reckon? That makes yeah, sense yeah. because in, in our minds, why would Edrin lie to us? What what possible yeah. reason would he lie to us about the crown? Right. Yeah. That's true. But it's also a perception thing, like whether or not you just are actually paying attention, you know? Um, yeah. I tend to think it's deception versus insight, just to keep the standard sort of rules. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's something that would, in, that would involve my passive perception. That's true. I, what is your I, passive perception? I would perception? suggest that my passive true. perception is 15. Okay, okay. So that's going to be your difficulty rating. Yeah. The first one's a nine. Okay, so... You, you you literally knocked the crown out of his hands, right? Oh, wait, that was before, because I was holding it. Oh, you oh were this holding was it. before right. I was yeah. before yeah, giving that offer. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so you're, you Oops. drop the crown, um, and he clearly has just dropped the crown for no particularly good reason. He's just dropped the crown on the floor. Thank you, Orson D, for the inspiration. Inspiration for Leith, yay. Yay. Okay, so the crown is now on the floor, um, and... You're not really sure, Steve, why he's dropped it on the floor. Uh, now you can make your second uh, deception check to see if you can switch the crowns. Yes, I was going for under the bed. That's a 10. A 10. Oh, okay. And Leith, <clears throat> so you literally see him conjure up a second crown from nowhere and try to switch them. At this, at, at this point, at this point, I'm going to, um, yeah, going to grab like a bed sheet, uh, like a, a pillowcase, right. and try to scoop up the um, the crown. Okay. Um, but uh, Edrin, are you trying to stop him, or are you just like giving up on that at that point, or what's your reaction to his reaction now? Yeah, at, at the point of which I make the. The second one tried to appear under the bed, and he's obviously 
not going for it. Um, Edrin makes it disappear, the second crown, as if it was never there. Right, so it's sort of like denial. Yeah, just... <laughs> right. So did, was... I, did I see the second crown appear? You did, you did. You see it appear, and then you saw it disappear. Once you, once you, once you realized, like when, basically, as Edrin saw you go for the the wrong crown, i.e. the the right crown, um, he made the second false crown disappear. Okay, I'll I'll pick up the real crown mm -hmm. in in the bed, in the um, the pillowcase just yep. in case there's just to put something between my hand and the yep um, and the crown yep and. Um, and take it across to the bag of holding and place it in there, All right. calling it calling it the um, crown the crown of shadows. shadows. Okay, so you drop the crown of shadows into the bag, Oof. and I'll just turn to Adrian and say, "What is going on? Please." I think I'd like to know myself. Uh, that was quite a charade you two put on. I can assure you, Edric, it was no charade from me. I was slightly hoping I could actually have another look at it before bed. I don't see I, why not. What's what's been I, happening? It, I've just been outside. It it gave me a little a little look somewhere. Somewhere. Well, I I, I feel you were attempting to deceive us here. Oh. Somewhat. What I think might have been for your own good, Leif, apologies, but I think from from what it looked like and from the description of the... Well, it was underground where, where, where the well was, right? Hey, it was uh, on the brow of a wraith. Uh, speak, sorry. Speaking of, and Adric fishes out the ruby. You remember how a uh, this was part of the part of the uh, the pair. Yes. Well, I, seeing as I am currently penniless, I, I, I plan to go and sell this. So I have it appraised, so go go sell it, and a measly twenty five gold for a ruby. Huh? Anyway, um, I think the, yes, uh, almost there, almost there. Getting to the point, uh, the gentleman that appraised it. Managed to track its uh, its track it down back to where it came from, an wow. old Ariasus king, who, from my memory serves, which it may not, uh, failed at an attempt at lichdom. So, right. that may or may not be magical. We don't know, but just an interesting tidbit. And he puts the ruby away. I think it might be nearsighted to, uh, pardon the term, pawn off uh, an item that was previously with another item. Well, that we are unsure of its its entire properties, um, but but I, I think that the 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 wraith and the fact that it was underground with the portal might lead to a connection between the two and and if they are connected um i'm i'm if 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 brixton went in uh, and and the crown is some sort of connection we might be able to that, that i was old old a silly man's musings but i think i was it was potentially worth the the second glance if somewhat uh, trying to spare Leith's, uh I know you were you were close to him, and um, I didn't want to necessarily get your hopes up. No. Pers personally, Idrin, I I feel that we all may be too close to the subject of this. I, I think we should have the crown and the jewel examined by a third party. Right. But it needs to be someone we trust. Right. Before we do anything more with it. Naturally. Only we had access to Maith. 
We have access to your brother's mentor. True. Do we trust him? I mean, he told us about... Uh, I, the, I, the, the... I would sooner entrust it to Maeve, but it, it, it would be a... It would be quite the uh, quite the journey to to get there simply for this. Yes, and and we trusted your brother's mentor with with getting the information about getting into the the sufferance. If if we can uh, trust him with potentially light treason, I think we can entrust him with with a with a, with a crown that gives visions. <laughs> that that is a good point, Adrian. At any rate, should probably leave it for now and address it at a later date. For now, is the matter of getting Ren out of the sufferance, I wager, is more is potentially more pressing. What time of the day is it? It's very late at night. You guys have right. gotten back from the Talandaran dinner. So it's because having a real dinner. It's practically Do we all do we all feel we should head head down now or or would we prefer to wait till morning the, the the crashing sound that happened was about the point where some of you were drifting off to sleep so you okay. know because this was the, you were all preparing for a long rest essentially if i recall Le leith is still asking that question because of a lack of need of sleep thing right. he's just kind of determined to get going makes sense well i i, I could do the uh, arrests uh for uh for this evening leith but we Still waiting on that letter, and if we were Certainly. to go knocking on someone's door at this hour to get a letter from them, I don't know if they'd be particularly happy. Absolutely. Let let us let us wait until morning then. There is the question of the potion we were hoping to have. Should we? Do we know someone we could make arrangements with at this hour? Can anyone yeah. get in touch with Vashti? What about the bookbinder? Uh, not the bookbinder, the... Um, the uh, guilt. Guilt. Hey, uh, well, I don't know if he can, but there's no reason to think he couldn't. Well, well, well this this would seem to be the, mo the most pressing of matters before we leave, so perhaps we should go see him tonight. I, I, could, I could do tonight. Uh, eight hours is eight hours. Well, it, ma it matters not to me, but Dala, do do you think he would be uh, amicable to? Uh... It is such a late night. I I do not know. He is a family man, after all. Yes, of course. We could go and and see if if there's a, an answer at the door. Shall you and I go? Yes, we would attract the, the rest. Can get some rest. Yes. It sounds like a good idea to me. Uh, very good. Let let uh, the, the the rest of you stay here. Um, have a good night's sleep, and um, Dala and I shall uh, go and make inquiries about this potion. All right, sounds reasonable to me. Okay, so what's happening? Do we do we have a do we have a recipe or any? No, I don't um, think you do. You've got some ideas about what you think the effects we would like to be. Mm -hmm. You have a, you have a th an idea for a theoretical potion that you believe can be made. Okay, whose idea was that? Uh, that was Ulrika's, I believe. Ulrika's. Ulrika, would you like to be part of this? to uh to give some information as to what we are in need of mm. yes yes then then perhaps you should come with us as well uh, got to guard her anyway my lady what this is true mm -hmm. okay i come so who's going and who's staying uh so i'm staying it looks I'll like it's me Okay, so Leith, Ulrika, and just Leith and Ulrika, or is Gudale as well? 
She's going. Dale Carla's as well. coming as well. Okay, so yeah. three of you are going. Okay, and you're going to go and try and find Gelt um, at the tannery um, in the lower city. Um, I see. Quick question. Yeah. Has Gudale left behind the a bag of holding? That is a question for Gudale. Mm. Well, I don't believe we've left just yet, but I wasn't planning on bringing it. <laughs> just a question. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> so up to you, Goodale. You're going to leave the bag of holding behind? Okay. I can't think of a reason that Goodale would bring it with her. <laughs> okay. All right. So this would actually be in the eastern quarter. Um, I'm just going to roll. I'm just going to roll my own quick insight check. No, Leith can't think of a reason to. Uh, Leaf doesn't see any reason to bring it either. Okay, I mean it's it's like obviously from from a certain perspective, walking around with a bag of holding. If one is to be caught with it walking around, mm. one is going to find oneself in trouble. Um, so you know, leaving it behind does make a certain amount of sense in a city where magic is somewhat controlled. Okay, all right. Well, you head on out from the Daughters of Twilight complex, and you head down through the city from above, um, and you go down an inordinate number of stairs to get down into the, um, what is in fact uh, the, 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 the Eastern Quarter, most famous for its markets, taverns, and nightlife, and its open air arena. Um, every corner seems to be the home of some shrine or temple um, here you will even find beggars from time to time who are normally turned out by the guard but in this particular part of town they seem to be a little bit more tolerant towards beggars um, and you come to a road whereupon there is a row of tanners and you go to the one that is run by Gelt Sunbrazen who is your contact with the servants of the fox um, and you approach the door. Hmm. Do you see any sign, any light, please? There's no light. It's it's dark. It's the middle of the night. Hmm. He does live. He does live in the middle of town. So I would suspect he would probably. Oh uh, well, he, he is related to you rather than me. So, uh, do you think he might be awake at this time of the night? I don't know. Um, have we knocked? Not yet. Not yet. Uh, I'll give it a try. All right. So you approach the door and you and you give it a knock. Yep. Um Is it a sort of a t pensive knock, or are you giving it a bang, bang, bang kind of a knock? I will. I won't give it a a, a, a heavy fisted kind of thing. Just a a polite, but. Um, not aggressive. Um, just a good, solid knock. Okay. Well, in a surprisingly short amount of time, after less than 30 seconds, the door opens and Gelt Sunbrazen stands before you and he looks around outside and he ushers you all inside. Do come inside, please. I hope we have not disturbed Tilly. Come in. He closes the door behind you as you come in. And um, he says, come through to the tannery. It's safer there. And you go down a hallway and you come out into a much bigger room full of all sorts of leathers that are being in different states of repair or being made from scratch. There's all sorts of tools on workbenches, lots of metal studs and other things, rings and scales and things that have been punctured and have, um, you know, lots of lots of leather works happening in here um is of... gonna leith is gonna drop back a little bit just to let dala take take the just to imply to dala to take the lead because this is family he also does not um light any candles or lamps the only light is a small amount of moonlight coming in through some high windows um in this large room um and, you know, you guys are all elves, so you all have dark vision, so you've got enough light to see each other 
maybe mm. maybe disadvantage on insight checks, but you know, um, he looks at you two. No need for light. The three of you actually. Um, now, how can I help you all? You've come here in the middle of the night. There must be something of extreme importance. Yes, uh, well, uh, yes. I'm so terribly sorry to disturb you at this hour. Um, y you may not have met our new friend, Orica. Um, this is, uh, well, this is Orica, and he's he's trustworthy. I see. Um, we've had to speed up our plans a bit and we are in need of something which Vashti may be able to provide. I see. Would would we be able to write a note and would you be able to get it to her? Yes. Yes, I can send a courier immediately. Oh, excellent. I can do the couriering myself if necessary. How necessary is this? It sounds to me like you're here in the middle of the night. It's probably very necessary. It, 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 is, it is quite urgent, yes. Very well. If you will give me the note, you have. have do you have the note, or do I? Do you need paper and ink? Um, if you have some to spare, that that would be good. We left in great haste, and I didn't write the note in advance. Come, come, which... come. It takes you to a to a small um, office at one end of the workshop. Um, <clears throat> it's not particularly sort of it's it's divided by a piece of cloth, and there is a seat and some parchment and some ink and a quill. He says here. Um, in fact, for this, I suggest we use something a little more discreet. And he says, I think you should write some sort of letter on one side of it. I'm going to give you some invisible ink for the other. Oh, very good. Okay. In case it is intercepted. All right. So Gadel starts writing in regular ink and a note inquiring about her health and right. how is business and so on. Okay. Um, and I'm going to get you to make a performance check because that's the best I can think of um, to see how that goes as a letter, just as a standard letter, how, how well it performs in its... Yes. 16. Uh, 16. I will, uh, um, Leith will, Leith will assist with ideas to give you some, um, all right. So you can give her advantage with give that. you advantage on that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, should, I, should I roll again then? You can roll with advantage. You can roll your second dice for advantage. 16 was good, <laughs> but, uh, 16 was eight. good. 16 was good. All right. <laughs> Okay, good, good. So you, you write your letter. You're pretty happy with it. Um, and then Gelt gives you, was good. Gelt gives you the invisible ink that he's uh, pulled out of a box that was hidden in the base of a drawer underneath a, you know, table. Um, and it shows you how, to, how it works. And so now you can tell me what is your actual letter going to say? Leith Orican, um, can you help me with what ex how exactly to word this we want a potion yeah. oh, 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 Ulrika, you you tell us what you need and we uh i i i have enough of an understanding of magics that i can uh, i can probably help you figure that out okay this the way it goes all right what we wanted to do is to make him look dead okay, okay. So um, we need it to be able to last for more. A day? A day? Mm. Yeah. Good. Good idea. A day. Um, so some sort of heavy sleep potion or um, uh, No, him must uh, be it Dala, must... are there any spells in the clerical canon that uh, this would resemble? Uh, yes, I do have feign death, but that only lasts one hour. Uh, uh, okay, yes, feign, feign death. So similar, something similar to feigning death. Yeah. Yes, but preferably that lasts longer and does not have any ill effects after it wears off. 
Okay. Um, mm -hmm. I, Russell, I'm going to take a, um, an arcana check mm -hmm. um, to sort of like give myself the words and uh, vocabulary the words yeah to sort of translate it into something a little bit more technical <laughs> for whoever's on the receiving end of the letter okay it must be so they can't check it with magic if mm. possible so something that cannot be easily detected that's the one <laughs> me can only say what i know me so, can only so, say so glamoured in some way. Mm. Yes. So that they cannot pick up. Okay. That it's been made by us. Leith, you can mm. make your arcana check. Um, I think that with, with all of the description that's been given so far and the time you've had to think about it, you can do it with uh, advantage. Okay, I'll roll another one just in case. No, the other one was a one, okay. so I'm definitely going to go with the 16. 16, all right. Okay, so, okay, so the final letter is is worthy of a sixteen. All right, and Galt takes the letter from you now that it has been written in invisible ink, and puts it in an envelope, or in a scroll case. Envelopes are not so much a thing at this point in the world. You don't hear of many Romans running around with envelopes. Yeah, if glass doesn't exist, then um, blue probably isn't a thing, right? Yeah. Glass, glass barely exists. It's just very uncommon. Um, mm. So, yeah, okay. Um, right. Galt takes the, takes the thing, sticks it in a, in a scroll case and seals it up. Um, and he says, and I shall deliver this anon. Many thanks. We've, we what very much mean? appreciate that. What that means is Hurricane. <laughs> Immediately, sir. Immediately. Ah, oh, okay. And if there's anything we can do to help you in any way in the future. He says, well, in the name of our cause, if anything was to arise, all of us, I'm sure, would lay down our lives for the cause. For the cause. So he ushers you back outside. He says, I will be leaving shortly, so I will need you to head off back to your residences. Of course. Good luck. Th thank you for your assistance. Now, when I have obtained said objects or object, where will I bring it? Uh, we, we are staying at the... Uh, where are we staying? We're staying at the doors of Twilight, yeah. yeah. Tarsalus Temple. Or you can come and find me here if you, or you can check to see if I've arrived back in time yet. Do you, do you have any rough idea of how long this might take, or is it is it more in the hands of my lord? It will uh, be entirely in the hands of her ladyship as to whether or not she can make such a potion, obtain such a potion, find the ingredients for such a potion, etc. Okay. It may uh, take, she may have something on hand, or it may take weeks. Who knows? Hmm. Would hmm. you like me to send word of its of the time scale? Uh, yeah, yeah, yes, that would be uh, yeah, that would be good. Um, perhaps we'll pop a note uh, at the bottom as well. You um, you want to add to the note now that I've yeah. sealed it? Uh, uh, now that you've sealed it, can you not um, just say? We need it by. I can pass the information. <clears throat> yes, the, the, yes, absolutely. Not Immediately, if not yesterday. You were not furnished by our lords and masters with such a thing as a sending stone, were you? Uh, so. There's been a talk of a stone being given by someone. Milford had one. Uh, or a set. Well, in which case, there may be a sending stone set. Uh, he probably has one of the two. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, dear. Never mind. <clears throat> Never mind. See how distant it can be. Maybe you can talk to him. I'll, yes. I'll just say, <laughs> I'll just say, if we could know by morning uh, of a time frame, that would be wonderful. Um, I'm not sure but, we will uh, know by morning. By morning, I may be arriving in 
Lithlian if we're lucky. I see. That will be at least tomorrow night before I'm able to, res to to get you any word at all. Very good. The earliest that you will receive uh, some some sort of actual object in return, the very earliest would be at least 48 hours, I suspect. There's very little chance thank you could get any quicker than that. That's just given the travel time and assuming that she has such a thing on hand. Yes. Um, then uh, I suspect there are other things that we, we should possibly concentrate on. Very good. Um, Dala. Uh, so let us... Um, yes, thank you. Thank you very much for your assistance in all of, of this. Go well. Um, Thank you, and Thank yourself. You. Light, love, liberty, and life. Uh, oh, um, light, love, liberty, and uh, life. Yes. Um. <laughs> All right. uh, closes, Thank you. Closes the door, and you're back out on the street. We'll head back to the barracks. All right. I think. Okay. So meanwhile, Adric and Edrin. So been, uh, um, having. Having done the journey to Geltz before, yeah. do I know how long that, that that would take? You've got a fair idea, yeah, yeah. You can guesstimate it. Uh, half hour? Half an hour, yeah. That's a fair, reasonable amount of time. And that's assuming they go there and come straight back. Um, yeah. But if they go there and do anything, then it's going to take a little bit longer. So minimum okay. of 30 minutes. And depending on what they do when they're there, it could be any time upwards of that. Okay, so... Uh, gonna knock on Adrian's door. Adrian, Adrian, boy. Yes. Adrian. Yes. Right. We've got a half hour, maybe. Right. Do you want that crown back? Uh. uh, uh you got I, momentum. Um, let's get. Let's. Let's. Well, you. You said something about the shadow fill, eh? Uh, a tenuous, I think, connection I, I made, but but potentially. That's while no one else is here to to worry. Let's you and I have a look, and I'm here to keep you safe. Oh, if you're if you're sure. Hey, look, you seem quite pretty intent on keeping that crown. Now, we have to put it back. So, if uh, when it comes to that. Yeah, Maith wants to have a look at it. He can look at it. But we can have a quick little gander on ourselves. It's up to you. All right. Let's All have, right. A, have a look. So I'm <clears> going <throat> to go and retrie retrieve it from the uh, the bag of holding. Okay. <clears throat> and All right, let's, let's be quick. Uh, I'm vaguely tempted to put the ruby in. <coughs> but I Maith think... May hold Baby on to that steps. now. Baby I, steps, I, I think. All right. Yes. Now, um, before before you put it on, did you feel any compulsion with the crown? Violence? Uh, anything like that? Not particular. I, I felt a little bit freer of mind when I put it on. All right. You said when you put it on, or did you say I put it on? When I put it on, okay. When 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 one puts it on, I felt when I had previously put it on, I felt freer of mind. Um. Mm -hmm. Right. I can do it if you want. I um. Think I've got this. So while last time I didn't really do it so much as it kind of just. As I just sort of in knee jerk wanted wanted to, I you think now that compelled. I'm thinking about it, I'm not compelled. It was just kind of so muscle memory. Make I your suppose. Wisdom saving throw as you're sitting there fondling the crown, holding it in your hand. Uh, twenty-two. Twenty-two. Okay. Yeah, you've got full control of yourself and your faculties. Must have. You can feel the tug. Curiosity, I guess. I think it was just um, curiosity. It's 
So what do you, what do you see? Did you put it on? Yes. Okay, so you put the crown on. Okay, so uh, what you see, Adric, is actually quite startling too because what you notice is that Edrin's eyes go, they light up a blazing fairy fire blue. And beyond that, you notice the area around his face starts to ice over. Like there's literally ice and frost forming on his skin around his eyes and his brow, around the crown itself. Edrin, for you, um, of course, the usual effect, as, as per last time, your intelligence score goes up by two, your wisdom score goes down by two. Um, and there are some other effects, mechanical effects, that we can discuss later. Um, in the meantime... The space around you begins to just begins to just evaporate, and the shadows pour back in again, and you find yourself kind of in that landscape that you were in before. Except now, Adric is standing in front of you, and you're kind of seeing Adric's shadow fell um, version of him. Um, Adric, do you have any thoughts on what that might look like? I imagine it's. It looks like, it looks like Adric, except. Um, he's a lot paler, and his cheeks are quite gaunt. Is he eyes giant? Hollow. Is he a giant-sized Adric, over, looming over Adric? I. Not quite. There's there's a, the the shadow that Adric casts is much larger than it should be. Right. And okay. the shadow itself has... If there could be burning in this uh, sphere, little flecks of what would be sparks are breaking off in it. Right. Makes sense. Okay, and there's probably a little bit of electricity buzzing around him too. Hell yeah. Would make a certain amount of sense. Okay, so this is what it's you're seeing, Edrin. Slowly present. reach out poke him okay. good I yes I um you look different different how um you paler no shadow fell eh? that makes it makes a certain amount of sense right and a little um sparky Edwin That's can you different. make a perception check Ooh, that I can. Perception. That was an odd angle, but five. Okay, never mind. So, what else do you see? Do I still see the six figures that were there before? Not at present. There, there were previously some other figures, but they seem to have gone what what you are seeing right now actually is the ruins you realize you're standing in the ruins of the Tarsalus temple it feels like you're 10,000 years in the future and this place has been wiped out and everything's dead and lost and there's just the ruins of the city around you it doesn't look particularly um well kept uh, on this side. You can see the fallen like, towers and broken citadels. Like it's a little bit dirty, or um, m more like everything's just kind of ruined. All right. How are you feeling? A little unnerved, if, I, if, I, if I'm if more honest. But right. um, there's nothing particularly <sighs> aggressive here. All right, good. Hmm. We may have better luck if we were to put this on where we lost him. Good idea. For now, this is a pretty good little test. Yes. Now, I am going to take the crown off you, giving you fair warning so you don't... All right. Anything, all right? One, all right. two, three. 
Wisdom Matrix. saving throw. From whom? Adric or my... Oh, sorry, Adric or Edrin. Yeah, Edrin. Edrin. Hang on a tickety-boo. I need to... Tickety-boo. Hang on a tickety-boo. I need to add that to the correct modifier because... Uh, 16. Wow, okay, you succeed. Yes. So I don't try bite his finger off Gollum style. Right. You do not. You do not. All right. Good, good first try. Now we've got a somewhat better idea of what this does. And by that, I mean fuck all. But you good know, start. Edric... I didn't realize how handsome you were until, you know, I guess you looked kind of, eh. Well, th- thank you, Idrin. I, I wish I could say I was a, uh, a hit with the ladies, but it's not. Oh, that's a discussion for another. Right. Well, I'm, <laughs> another not, time. I'm not particularly a, 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 um, a, a, a hit with the ladies either. Oh, yes. You know, you're quite dashing. I will say that. Not my type, but quite dashing. Thank you. And I'm just going to, as we're talking, I'm going to bundle it up in the cloth again and uh, slip it back into the bag of holding. All right. All right. And you put it back in the bag of holding and then you go about doing various innocuous things, I presume, until the others return. Yeah. Okay. If you've got anything particularly or special that you would like to get done in that last those last ten minutes before they return, um, no. Okay. Nope, Everybody nope, comes back good. to the barracks then, and um, I assume you guys are going to all head to bed at this point. <clears throat> hey. All right. Very well. Very long story short, the next morning bell rings outside the door and you all are either awake or waking when oh um, going out to the door very good um an alvin servant comes in with um a couple of other servants they bring in trays of food breakfast etc for their guests mm. and they lay them out thank you kindly <clears throat> pairs again we didn't kill any of you to bring chicken. Well, I, I, wa- I was going to suggest that perhaps we request um, some packed meals. Edric. Hey. Uh, Over there. Oh. Why were you hiding that? Chicken. Because I want to eat it first. Oh, I, I, th- I thought as much. Yeah. And lo and behold, there is a carcass. Elle's remembering that breakfast was poisoned before can she roll a perception or something uh yes you can you can make an investigation investigation <laughs> she notices that there's food on the table <laughs> <laughs> it's yes yes it's 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 either it's all poisoned or it's not you can't tell you, you have no Andrew? way of knowing whether it's poisoned apparently Edric is the best possible person to, to have a bit of everything first. Right, true. So, Adric, are you going to um, test the waters, as it were? Not unless I'm warned. I, I Adric, does, Adric doesn't recall anything being poisoned. He wasn't really part of that debacle. Right. Neither was I, so I can't warn anybody. Yeah, uh, right. Um, I think I was the only one, then. Oh, Leith, do you remember the day that we had those strange fellows bring us the breakfast and it turned out that it was poisoned? Was that not yesterday? Yes. What was yesterday? <laughs> so much happened yesterday that it <laughs> seems like it, such it, a long it, time. Yes, it's Poison? very... Uh, well, very we can uh, put down a chicken leaf. Poison? What are you doing with poison? Leith's just going to pick up a piece of something off the... T- off the um, the platters and give it a sniff. Okay, it smells all right. It smells normal. So I mean, can me chicken leg now? Were, were any of the uh, were any of the staff uh, unrecognizable to you, or did they appear to be all on the level? They seemed normal to me. I 
Mm. That kind of tastes poison. I mean, it should be fine. If they failed yesterday, then perhaps they're too afraid to come back again. Yes, I, I don't. I, I don't suspect they would try the same thing twice. Ah, but that's just what they want you to think. Yes, if they know true. that you know that you know that they know, then they may give it a shot. Okay, mm, that's me. No problem, me chicken leg. Yeah, right, I can't eat taste anything. Don't worry. If I fall over and die, you better heal me. Ready, right. go. So, <laughs> long story short, um, you guys tried various means to discover whether or not the food is poisoned. Um, you taste test it, you sniff it, you do whatever. Nope. Um, after no, no. great investigation, you come to the conclusion that there is no poison. It's, like, it's fine. Unless you it's prefer fine. to eat somewhere else, which is me also possible. You. Me no free you. food. It's fine. It's really good. Mm, apple. Mm. Yeah. Well, if... If Ulrika says it's good, then it must be good. All right. Mm. So mm -hmm. what are you guys going to spend the next 24 hours doing? Well, maybe whilst we're we waiting for this potion mm. to return from Lithlian. And, and we're waiting for the letter too. Yes. Uh, well, you're, yeah, I mean, the letter, you you, you need to go and find out that, 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 about that. That's That's something you can... That's something you can actually operate upon. Bloody turn down. Yes, Orica. We should go and look for litter. Hmm. What do you reckon? Shall we find uh, Do you want your chicken leg? Because I have it. Hmm. Oh, please, you, you help yourself. I, I'm happy with my tea. Thank you. Um mm. Yes, do we know where Lady Fairhell is? She's the rector of the Red Guard. Is that something... Can we just go and visit them? Well, you've never tried, but, um, you know, you could investigate that. Me not go, me stay here. Nope, me guard you. Me go... No Wolf reason, skin Mike. Witch says, gotta love Aurica. Let's go. Okay, so uh, who's going and where? I'll go with. All right. Anyone We're else? We're going to get later. Yeah, I guess I'll go with. I'll come as with. Well. Okay, so is this a full team? This is to follow to follow yeah. up on last night's letter, right? Uh, the letter I don't know, I'm not sure it was last night, but the letter that you wrote to oh. um, Lady Firahel, Ilanis Lea Firahel, the rector of the Red Guard. You were you left a letter for her in order to apply for clergy service at the Sufferance. That's my understanding. Is that correct? Right. Okay, so um, yeah, you could go and check up on it if you wish. Um, so mm. you want to know where the Red Hell Guard yeah. headquarters is? That's your first question. Um, none of you actually know where the Red Guard headquarters is at this point. No, um, I would imagine it's quite secret. Yes, yes, but you do know that there is a garrison outside the sufferance of Red Guard, and that's a strong possibility. Oh, because says, would you not send messenger, you know? I mean, she might, but there's no harm in, you know, applying a little bit of pressure, poking the dragon, so to speak. You want us to stay here and wait for the letter, and you go and make sure there's, you know... Well, well, we'll we'll be coming back, so let's all be just be like slipped under that door anyway. Oh, good point. Good point. Okay. All right. We go. We we go. Okay. I mean, there's other other options as to do things like ask a Alar, who might have some clue. He's had more um, to do with the Red Guard and the Black Guard than 
any of you guys at this point, including Goodale. Mm. Um, so that's another option. You could make some inquiries. Mm -hmm. We could also visit um, Alanthra before she goes back to yeah. Vane Gate. That's true. She said she was leaving in the next 24 hours or so, so you have a narrow window with which to visit her. Let's go, Alandra, and then we go to Brother, then we go... <coughs> yeah, yes, absolutely. Oh, Alandra, uh, do we have to? Um, well, she's just in the apartments around the corner from us, I think. Yes. Uh, from, if right. I recall from the day we were... In You're the, pretty in sure the passage. of that, yes. Um, okay, okay. So let's you could quickly. stay here. No, no, it's it's fine. It's fine unless it's in a temple, then no. But I, I'll come with. It's fine. You know, me glad we're not your secret room. Well, not yet. <laughs> Don't think I fit. Mm. No, I'm sure I... we could squeeze you in. Okay, let's go. Okay. Okay, so you leave the apartments and you head over to Iolanthra's apartment, which is not too far from here. It's in the same temple complex. Um, she, of course, has um, even nicer apartments than you do. Um, and Boy, this is nice. It's similar to, similar to yours, but um, she has the, the luxury rooms and the, the smaller rooms around it in, in the courtyard, much like yours, are all occupied by her various... Um, underlings, servants, and um, priestesses, um, including a couple of paladins. Um, and when you get there, you are ushered into her foyer, her court, the courtyard there, where um, she is presently being armed. You, you see that her um, squires are putting her strapping her armor to her arms and legs and what have you and um, putting on the final touches. Interestingly enough, Idrin, as you come in, you see them lowering a crown onto her head like a tiara. It's a, it's a very small, thin crown that kind of embeds into her hair. There are blossoms falling through the courtyard roof into the room in a light wind picks them up and carries them around the space as you stand there. She looks across at the five of you as you enter. And she turns. Good day, all. Iolanthra, I thought I would try to uh, make contact before you departed for Vingate. Yes, we will be leaving very shortly. We are preparing now. How may um, I help you? I was wondering if I said to you, Temple Fortress, home up, silver, silver elf mother, honorable uh, gate journey, does that mean anything to you? She looks at you somewhat suspiciously for a minute and narrows her eyes in a way that you've never seen her look in your life. She says, I'm afraid I do not understand. What are you saying, Gadale? Are you well? Are you, having, uh, are you having a turn? Well, last night, just prior to your arrival at my family home, I'd had one of my fits, and in in the vision that accompanied this fit, yes. I was in a temple of some sort. It looked like a giant temple. And around an archway in giant runes, these words were written. And um, there's a gate key. These were the words. The it's words a gate that you key. spoke were they translations of the giant? Yes. This is a gate key. It is a gate key. You received a gate key in a vision. Do you have? Have you documented this? Have I documented? I. Uh, Yes, we did document it, didn't we? Istradal, right, right, Istradal, done. come, quickly. This, one of the temple girls comes over. She says, I want you to fetch parchment and you must 
fetch an artist to paint this vision. You will work with Gudale and paint this vision. I want every detail. Hmm. Well, gentlemen, it looks like I'll be very busy this morning, so if if you want to um, go do something else, um, I quite understand. But uh, I've got some business here that must be attended to. I... Uh, gentlemen, how would you feel about having a chat to um, Elar about the uh, Red Guard's uh, location? You gentlemen, excuse me. What you have I... witnessed here and what you have heard and every connection that you have with this vision of Gudales, this must not fall into any other hands. How can I make this more importantly... Uh, more clear and imperative to you. It's oh, we very much understand that. Good. Out of game, she looks at each of you and reads your surface thoughts. Um, if you want to make a saving throw against that, you can. I believe it's a wisdom saving throw. Um, Leith has care, nothing to hide. If you have nothing to hide, then perhaps you can tell me what your surface thoughts are. Um, that that he's almost he doesn't quite understand what what needs to happen with this but he knows that it's of vital importance so will will follow to the letter anything that is asked of him okay adric uh, i'm going to save you're gonna make a save yeah that's a uh, 13 13 all right very well edrin also gonna make a save. Hello. Hey. Eighteen. Okay, and Erica. I am not gonna make a save. I am thinking my only worry here is the safety of La Lady Talandara. Very good. And I'm not leaving her. Okay, so you're gonna stay with her while they investigate this vision and take notes. Okay, very good. Yes. Should right. I leave behind what I wrote down? Would that help? That would be very useful, I suspect. Right, it's not much more than what um, Dale has already remembered, but if it if it helps, also prevents it from falling into the as you as you said wrong hands. Yes, she looks at you two, in particular Adric and Adrian, and she says, "These gate keys." We of the Daughters of Twilight have a network of gates which we have access to. There is a gate at Solanor Temple in Vane Gate. A giant Ostorian ruined gate. These, these places, these portals lay across the world. Each of them has a key. We seek these gate keys so that we can re-establish the network so that we may send and otherwise receive individuals from about the world what do I I clearly wasn't in uh, Dala's vision so I, I can't verify what they look like but I and Adric looks at looks at Goodale I believe we may have seen one here, underneath the, the palace. We oh. went where we shouldn't have been to gather more information on certain things, and that would be why you don't see dear Brixton in our number. Interesting. We shall investigate it's... this further. Perhaps I will need to stay here another day. She looks about. Do you have a means to get us to this gate? We were uh, we were only able to get in through. Um, subterfuge. Subterfuge. I I was trying to find a more delicate way to put it. We had a bit of help. In that regard. I see. And if one wished to obtain access to such a location. Miss Talandarin, do you think you would have 
the ability to make that happen again. I let God us there in the first place. He may be able to do do it again. That is your brother, um, yes? Yes. However, my father, when he found out that we'd been down there, he was most displeased, and I'm... I'm not I'm sure... to attempt this again. If it were important, I would absolutely attempt it again. I'm just not certain how successful I would be. I see. It would be extremely politically sensitive if one of our members were to be found traversing the halls of the palace and breaking into these locations. You, however, Dala, are a member of our order, but you have other connections. So it seems to me that if you were to return to this location, it would be less of an international crisis, less of an incident. If you were to be caught, you could perhaps talk your way out of it, do you feel? Yes, perhaps, especially with uh, the help of my friends. Plus, what's another... Uh, we always love a nice little reason and an occasion to piss off your old man. Mr. Fogdar, I? I am led to believe, based on certain intelligence, that you are an expert on the subject of giant runes. Is that correct? Adric uh, deliberately uh, scratches the, um, the stone rune Im Im like embedded in his chest. Hmm. I have some proficiency, I. I see. So if one was to go inside this location with the foreknowledge of what one was looking for, one might have a better chance of recognizing and understanding what one was looking at. Certainly. I see. And with the assistance of your two magical advisors, perhaps. We would likely have less ruin this time. I but see. it's just uh, the getting in that's a problem. Um, as it is, the um, God, what what is? Oh, I can. I know. I'll ask. What's um, uh, Goodell's dad's name again? Elandor. Elandor. <laughs> well, as Goodell mentioned, Elandor was aware of us, so I'm. It may be overly cautious, but if um, I'm, I get the feeling that that location itself is going to be highly better guarded. Well, imagine he's got some idea of its importance. If you have any thoughts on upon a plan and you see any way in which I can assist by means of distraction or even divine magic, you will tell well, we've me. We've got we know where it roughly where it is uh, geographically. So if you could turn us into birds or something, we could fly to it without uh, hmm. getting in the way of the um, uh, city, uh, palace guards at all. This is something we can consider. It's a, a you know, plan. Or a large... Uh, um, create some, fabricate some holy reason you need to go to the palace and pull all the guards somewhere and we just sneak in, maybe. I myself could cause quite a distraction. I believe you could. In the palace. And I could take a considerable force with me. Excuse me, Mr. Fogdar. Eh? We have a mission at hand. This is true, but we've also got to wait until we get our potion. No idea when it'll come. Hopefully we'll, we'll find out soon. But until then, we have to be proactive. <coughs> Excuse me. I, I do agree. Well, well if you have any further thoughts, find me. You know where I am. I shall remain for another three days. Seeing Excellent. as you have this most interesting opportunity. Well, 
considering what we've the reason why we are here we may or may not be in the city if if we have to leave is going to be mighty quickly understood similarly well uh Dala, you've got a vision to tell. The rest of us can go have a chat with Ayla. Excellent. Please give my brother my regards. I will certainly try to remember. Adric, one last thing. I. She steps forward towards you and she speaks directly into your mind. She says, your heart will be mended. You will not be alone forever. Love will return. And uh, Adric say, uh, is going to say out loud, Stay a fuck out of my head. Wow. Very well. Gidea looks a little bit askance <laughs> at Adric because obviously she idolizes Iolanthra. She's a little bit like, All right. Are we understood? L- Leith is a little bit like... There is no ah! understood because at that point she has severed all connection. I, 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 told I, her I, I no think we should... I, I think we should uh, uh, perhaps leave about now. That I, might be wise. And I'm just staring at, her, staring at her right into her eyes. And uh, I don't know if I can use it this way, but I'm going to try to impress upon her just how serious I am uh, with uh, my that you know, haunted one feature heart of darkness thing. Okay, how does um, that work? All right, those who look into your eyes can see that you have, ha- have faced unimaginable horror and that you are no stranger to darkness. Though they might fear you, commoners will extend your courtesy and do that must help you. Unless they have shown yourself to be a danger to them, they will even take up arms to fight alongside you. I'm taking a creative liberty with this. <laughs> I think what you're going to discover is that she has the same central oh, shit. background and that you see a reflection of yourself for a moment at least on a soul spiritual kind of level and I, but I, she I think but she gets your least... point immediately and backs away seeing that reflection i think i, I might my gaze would soften just a little bit thank you She nods. She she curtsies to you all. She says, then we must all go our ways. Hey. Thank you for your time. Yes, I think that would be prudent. And um, Leith starts to shuffle everybody else except for Dala out of the room. I, 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 let's go. Let, 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 let's go. All right. So where are you going? Me not go. Okay. Ulrich is staying. Oh, sh- sure. Yes. Okay. So, Leith, Adric, and Edrin. Where uh, go we? Go- uh, are we going to Ailar, guys? Yeah. All right. Uh, so, Ailar's then. Okay. Let's long. St- okay. So, yeah. You, you arrive at Ailar's. You are given access by his servants. They take you to the tea room where you are served a light tea and biscuits. And. Eventually, Ayla comes out, um, and he sees the three of you. He says, where is my sister? Uh, she had matters to attend to with Ayalantra. We are, uh, we, the... we, are represent, we are representing her in her absence. I see. Very well. And how can I help you, then? Sorry. So we have uh, two favors to ask of you. Yes, sir. First is much easier, and that is to, where can we find the Red Guards? Uh, You know, uh, central offices, just because we we sent away a letter to, um, I want to see her name, to, to, to... Alanis um, Leah Farahal. To Alanis Leah uh, yesterday. And uh, we're hoping for, you know, some uh, correspondence 
and we may be pushing the uh, poking the dragon, so to speak, uh, to um, get that through a bit quicker. I see. You will find that Elanis spends much of her time at the garrison fort near the sufferance. Oh. However, her family manse is not far from here. If she was to be found anywhere else, it might be there, or perhaps the palace. You should know that the Black Guard and the Red Guard both have offices in the palace. Ah, well, it, no reason we couldn't check all three. If, if, they're, if her manse is, uh, you know, just close to here. So go there first, then the fortress, and then palace last, because we want to stay away from there. These are the addresses that you will need. These Thank are the you. locations, descriptions, etc. He writes it all down for you. Um, Thank you kindly. You will destroy these papers when you're done with them? Certainly. Very good. Is there anything else I can help you with, fine gentlemen? Do you recall last night when Goodale had a vision? She was taken from the room, yes, I remember that. Was it a vision? Uh, I was it, not aware it of was. that. I uh, don't know if we had to... We left fairly quickly after that, so we didn't have a chance to ch chat about it. So the vision was about... A, uh, similar to what we saw underneath uh, the palace. Yes. Yeah, and we were, we were wondering if there was any chance between now and when we tried to break Ren out of the sufferance where we could go inside and look at it again. Oh, things have become complicated since then. The guards have been tripled, so to speak. I cannot mm. say I am aware of the entire uh, current security situation there. However... Hmm. How could this be orchestrated? How could this be orchestrated? Oh, uh, a, a thought, an idle thought that I had on the when we were thinking about this earlier. Yes, was potentially turning us into birds so we could fly in past the waterfall. Very powerful magic you require for this. Not my magic. I I just hit things. Yes, I assume none of you have this power. Uh, definitely more powerful than I am capable of. Hmm. It is more possible that we could disguise you as black guards. Even myself. Well... No, no, I've never seen a dwarf on the black guard. You might not be a black guard. You could perhaps be hired as an some sort of expert in giant matters perhaps I was just uh, seeing what you had in mind <laughs> he looks at you up and down I've heard the stories so I, I couldn't possibly uh, verify any of those of course not well Give me a few hours to look into the matter. I, I do like the idea, but first I will have to find whom it would be that might be able to polymorph you into birds. If then it would be a case of getting you out again. You see, mm. that could be problematic. I, I, I do think that might be a case of a, a bridge that we cross when we come to it. Um, Yes. The, the, the urgency of getting in is starting to uh, is starting to be uh, quite the pressure. I see. I shall speak with Azariah immediately then, and I shall see if he has the capability of casting such powerful magic. I'm not sure that he would be willing to, even if he could. Um, it is great risk to all involved. A uh, more mundane means would pr be preferable to all, I suspect. Easier to, to sell. Aye. Aye. How many members of you would you be taking? Would be Goodale? Would my sister be going on this journey? 
Absolutely. No, see, yes. can, seeing as the she had the vision. I see. Orica, the three of us. I see. Hmm. Very well. Let me do some investigating. I will find you this afternoon. Fantastic. If we are not at any of our Alana's um, locations, we'll be back at our lodgings. Let us meet for dinner. Ah, even better. I have a place. There is a there is a tavern called Grumsh's Folly. Here? Yes. In the city? Yes. All right. It is in the North Wall District, not far from where I imagine you had this fine set of plate armor built. I, I've completely blocked out the North Wall part. So I'm, I'm, you know, quite mollified that he thinks my armor is nice. He does. <laughs> Very well. I'm then. not above a compliment. Yep. Good. <laughs> Very good. Then I shall see you then for dinner. Grumsh's Folly, well, the North Wall fantastic. District. Seventh, seventh bell. Seventh bell. Thank you. We shall see you there. Hopefully, Gadea will be done with her business. Very good, then. Is she well? Uh, she was less than happy with how um, things ended with your father last night, but better. How did things end with my father last night? Oh, he was... Well, I uh, I hate to speak ill of someone that's not around, but he was, yeah, for lack of better phrasing, quite condescending towards her. Oh, that, that being is... said, I'm sure you're quite used to it. Lord Fogda, my father is condescending towards everyone. He is the supreme commander of the Black Guard, one of the most powerful factions in all of Sadara Hell. He is condescending. He, he embodies condescension. And as a father... Doubly so. And to the father of a, a young girl who grew up having fits and visions, you can only imagine how much more so that was. Bloody poor father. Bloody poor father. He has many good intentions. It's not entirely his fault. He is a product of his time and his... Um, influences but uh, as we all are hey cool motive still bollocks <laughs> i've not heard that <laughs> one before is that a, a dwarven slang no that's uh that that's that's uh that's an adric original straight off the uh the dome so to speak i see i thought perhaps it had come from vain gate even but nonetheless amusing I oh well, I, th I thought you'd think so it shall be added to the annals of my history books. <laughs> I will. Uh, if, 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 yeah, pass me a royalty if, uh, if it ever ends, and ends up in a poem or something. I shall do my best. Right, hmm. Thank you. Let me see. Let me see. I'm considering how as many of you as possible can be added to some sort of special unit to, sent to investigate sent to investigate whatever it was that these uh, infiltrators were investigating previously. Hmm. Whatever in there could be of uh, note, a note. Yes. Why? Yes. Very good. Seven o'clock. Ah. Seventh Seven o'clock it is. Seventh Seven o'clock, yes. Be well. Be Seventh well, thank bell. you. All right, so you guys go. Where do you, where yes. do you go? So uh, by this see. time, it's it's about 11 o'clock in the morning. And the 11th bell is ringing, and many people are heading to tea houses and other such places for, you know, 11sies, what have you. Uh, I believe we're, because it's closest, heading to the, uh, Alanis's manse first. All right. Okay, so you get to the manse, and um, the gates are closed. There's no guards. Well, do you think... Do you gentlemen think we just... go in? Just knock? <clears throat> I think we could knock. 
It does seem surprisingly quiet. So there's a there's a couple of big iron gates that you can see through, um, and there's a fountain inside, but the fountain is not going. Um, there is a chariot that sits stationary, um, unhorsed and unconnected to anything. It's just sitting there like it's sort of being prepared for something at some point. Um, there's no horses, no signs of life, no guards, no servants. Yes, Leith. What, what, are, what are we following up with her? Uh, we're checking up on the... Uh, Letter. The, the Gadel, uh, Dala's cleric, oh, clergy service to go and, so we be, can get in to go see Ren. Being slightly pushy and impressing upon her the time that, um, that the time has compressed a little bit. Yep. Yeah. Cool. I can't, I can't wait to piss off a dragon. I'm really into it. <laughs> um, all right. So the the uh, the manse itself doesn't look particularly lived in from the outside. Not especially. It's a beautiful manse, though. At least it once was, but it's covered in moss and there's fallen leaves in the in the outer court. You know, on second thought, she's probably not here. No, probably not here. Well, there must be some way of being able to make contact with her <coughs> here. She wouldn't uh, advertise the fact that she was about town. No, by I having just... a having a. Uh, she's likely at the garrison, where she's most useful. I wager. Oh yes, most needed. Uh... I mean, considering what we know about her, I don't think she'd be happy living inside that well yes you uh, you're probably right it, it, it wouldn't be much of a um a fit for her I, I mean not, not that she's large or anything but um, um just um mm. a, a good fit indeed <laughs> very well so what do you guys do should, yeah. should we should we perhaps slip a note under the door? No, just, you can't just get case. to the door. There's a gate, but there's no guards. I'll try to open the gate. The gates are locked. So are the there's walls there. on either side like brick, or is it more wrought iron and spikes? Stone walls on either side, with big, big lions sitting on top of the on either side of the gates. Is there anyone about? I'm going to get a fridge dropped on me for this. There is are. there a letterbox? <laughs> there is no letterbox. You can just climb over the wall. Um, there are, is there, there anyone are about? people about. Yeah, it's the middle of the okay. day. And this is this is okay. one of the more opulent parts of town. Gotcha. Quick, Adrian, blow something up. I'll, I'll climb over the, um, the wall. <laughs> I don't you, think you, that's a particularly wise idea. In fact, you know what? Everyone can make. Everyone who's present can make a perception check. Perception check. Yeah. Can do. Seven. Winty. Dirty. Ooh, dirty. That, that is a stinky, dirty, filthy 20. I see. Um, well, okay, then. One moment, please. A uh, stinky 20, you say. Right, stinky 20 you. and a dirty uh, a 20 so dirty. edrin was a seven so edrin you what are you thinking about right now that's got you distracted just how to get beyond the gate so edric can right. post his letter right well meanwhile so leith, the under the thing. leith and adric you both kind of look at each other and it suddenly occurs to you that you've walked past this house like five times recently um well, at least four times to and from goodale's um family mansion um, and you've never noticed it before. Huh. So it only became apparent to us now that we are aware of it. Now that you're looking for it, suddenly it became you were able to find it. Elith, uh, do you mind uh, boosting me? I'm going to climb over that wall. Absolutely, yes. I, I don't Eden. mind a little bit of petty larceny if it's uh, if it's for a good cause. Adrian, spread, spread your cloak to hide us behind it. 
<laughs> Perfect. Now, now, just a shimmy dance. So, like, you, you're more of a distraction than a crocus. So, you're going to make a stealth check with advantage. Then you're going to make an <laughs> athletics check with advantage. I'm going to s- stealth with disadvantage. So, it's just a straight roll. So, just a straight um, roll for you. W- would you like <laughs> me to make some sort of a strength check for the boosting? Uh, no, you're giving him assistance. So, he's getting a... He's getting oh, a the advantage. Yeah. Okay. J- just to point out that I do have negative on my modifier for strength. Right. No, you, you, no, that's yeah. good. Everybody thinks they're Milford. My God. Well, we have to make do since you decided to jump in a hole. All right. Okay, right, so that's a twelve, a 12. Uh, on my stealth check. On the stealth check. Okay, it's it's yeah, it's barely <laughs> barely adequate. You believe? You think? Tw- Twenty three athletics. Okay, so with the athletics, you you get over the wall without too much trouble. You climb over that, drop down on the other side. Okay, you're inside, on the right. other side of the gate, hiding behind the wall. Fantastic! I'm just, I, I'm gonna like start digging through my uh, my pockets, because I've just <laughs> realized I don't think I have any paper. All right. Uh, clothes, holy symbol. Not to mention I've got ink. Drugs. Uh huh. Uh huh. <laughs> I don't have anything. Hey, guys, yeah. guys, can you hear me? Hmm? Yeah, we can see you. Yes. Oh, I through the gate. Do you? Do you? I've just realized I don't have any paper, and for that matter, Ooh. I don't have any ink, and for um, that matter, I don't le- have a quill. Le- Leaf will pass his his pen and ink. And um, and a piece of parchment uh, through the gate. Okay, yeah, I'm just gonna like kneel on the floor and start writing on the ground. <laughs> Leith, Deal. can you make a perception check, please? Yep. I'm gonna I'm gonna subtly conjure out of my <laughs> anybody thing, yes. just a board Na- for him to lead on. Anybody who's looking at Adric can make a perception check. I got a natural twenty. Okay. <laughs> Gotta get fucking punched. dirty twenty. Dirty twenty. Wow, you guys are rolling like <laughs> wow. That's amazing. Okay, um, what you both notice then is that Adric seems to wink in and out on the other side of the gate, like he's he's there. He's not. He's there. He's not. Like he's flickering in and out of existence. It's bizarre. It's like he's walking behind the bars of the gate and he's literally there, not there, there, not there. Sometimes being there less often than not. Russell, have I noticed anything different by being behind the bus? From your point of view, everything seems the same. However, you can make a perception check now. Okay. 17. You have the sense of something padding out of the, um, the undergrowth of the overgrown plants around the side of the garden here on the other side of the gate behind you. Padding out like something's walking, you mean? Yeah. Oh, I don't think I'm alone. What did you say your perception check was? 17. Okay. No, I don't think I'm alone. You hear a low growl behind you, at which oh. point Adric is no longer visible to the rest of you guys. That's not good. <laughs> where did he go? Leith, where uh, did he go? Is this a dwarf thing uh, he can do? No, it's not. He seemed to be blinking in and out, and um, and then he just disappeared. I, I I passed him the paper, and boom, he was gone. Adric, Adric, do you turn around? I'm going to turn very slowly because I've been around I've been around predators before. And I don't want to trigger its feline instincts. Right. Ha- ha- hands up and uh, to to show I'm no danger. Right. Very slowly. Well, as you as you slowly turn, you see this wiry black feline, panther-like creature, with what immediately strikes you. It has six legs, and from its back rises these tentacles, with these pads on them, with spikes coming from the pads that look like they could tear somebody apart with those all by itself. And it just walks out very slowly and watches you as it 
turns its body in your direction and begins to move into a low crouch. Um, does the, and the now that I'm rise up above it. Now that I'm past the, um, uh, cause Michael's still thinking something else is happening as well. Does the house look the same? Pretty much the same. Okay. So it still looks very not lived in. It, it looks even more not lived in on this side of the fence. All right. So there's a, there's like a cat, a big cat. It's got six legs and tentacles. Do you... Nobody either can Either of you, you know what that is. <clears throat> they can't hear me? Nobody can hear you. They, they, you can talk, but they don't, you don't know they can't hear you, I, I assume. I think naturally, Adric could also like start backing away slowly so his, um, his back, until my back touches the gate. Leave, do you think we should do something? Well, uh, He's just gone. He's just disappeared. I, I mean, he seemed fine. Um... Uh, um, uh, could you could you hold uh, up the cloak? I might pop in. Losing sight. Hold uh, up the cloak. Sure. I'm going to pop in. All right, and yes. I'm going to use another trans- stealth check. So what's, feel. what's happening at this point? You guys are jumping the fence. Uh, uh, no, he's, he's holding up. No, I'm not jumping the fence. I am using. Uh, where is it gone? I'm using benign transposition, where I'm going to teleport thirty feet into an unoccupied space that I can see. Uh-huh. And I'm okay. going to behind the cloak that that Leith is holding up. I'm going to go from there into the courtyard. Okay. Just right. kind of. Okay. Um, all right. You pop into the courtyard, and you're next to Adric. Leith, what are you doing? I, I'm just uh, holding up the, the, the cape. Um, I, I will bring it down when I see a move. And uh, hmm. so, as you as you're standing there with the cape, um, some some elf um, looks like looks like a tradesman or something is walking past you. He looks <laughs> at you. You're right, there, sir. I'll just turn and say, "Do you mind? My friend is trying to get changed." <laughs> In the street, sir. Y- yes, it's it it it's a bit of a situation. Oh, never mind me then, sir. I'm off I go. He wanders off. All right. Very good. Um, Ad Adrian, you've misty stepped through the gate to where Adric is. Um, yes. you're now invisible to. Uh, um, hello, Adrian. Adric. Lovely of you to join me. <laughs> what, what is that? I do. I was asking you. Right. Um, uh, so, did you happen to open the gate when you came in? No, I just kind of stepped through it. Can you do it again with me? Um, wait, were you talking to us before? Aye. Ah, uh, yes, yes. So, it, we, we, you were talking to us and, and we couldn't hear you. That would explain one thing. Okay. Um, now, can you repeat that, the teleporty, and take me with you? I can try. You Let's, can roll uh, initiative. That's what you two can do. <laughs> okay. Six. Um, Leith, you're still where you are, right? And you're, uh, you're not, yeah. You're, I'm just trying to just scrambling to find something that I might be able to get over or through i'll tell you what least because you're in the vicinity i'm going to get you to roll initiative as well just in case you choose to okay. get into this at some point i don't want to have to add you to yep. the thing later i um, rolled a i rolled an eight you rolled an eight okay um i don't have misty step um okay i feel that's a bit of a Okay, Edrin, Edrin, what's your initiative? I got a seven. Seven. Leith, what's your initiative? Eight. Eight. Adric? Fourteen. Fourteen. Okay. So, Adric, at this point, you have the initiative. This thing seems to be padding slowly towards you. It's lining up to leap from what you can tell, Just, just the sense of it. Just looking at it, it looks like a cat preparing to leap. Okay, okay. I'm going to 
Jay, I'm gonna uh, enlarge mm -hmm. uh, as my as my bonus action, mm -hmm. and then as my action, I'm going to I'm gonna pick up um, uh, Edrin and put him on the fence, put him on the wall. Okay, Edrin, are you just gonna let him do that? Yep. All right. Edrin's a squishy, squishy boy. All right. So I, at the very least, I got to put him out of harm's way. Right. So that's your action. Yeah. All right. Um. Okay. At which point then, um, this creature is going to make its jump, jumpy, jumpy attack at you. Um. What is your armor class? Uh, 23. I'm using my... I've left my Hammer of Thunderbolts back at the um, in the bag. All right. All right. These two tentacles come... <laughs> and hit both sides of your helmet, um, clobbering you on either side with, its, with the tentacles. However, they don't do any damage to you. They don't manage to penetrate your full plate dwarven armor. Fancy. Nice. Um, at which point uh, it tries to bite you, but it fails its bite as well. Edrin, you're sitting on the wall. Um, I, I lean down and go, Edric, I can't quite get you out of here. You're slightly too big. Well, I, how, how tall is the um, the wall, Russell? Oh, it's 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 a quite a tall wall. It's about fifteen feet tall. I. I, I at my 10, I could probably just, like, get my hands up and pull, right? Yeah. If I were to try that. Yeah, okay. could do that. But that is, a, that is an option I haven't considered and yet. And that will be an athletics uh, check. Yeah, which I'm, I'm not... I, it's not my turn, so I can't do that now anyway. All right. Don't, uh, don't worry you're... about me. I can climb up. Okay, because I can always... When we're small. Um, I'm going to cast Ice Knife at the little thing. Okay. I'm going to cast it at s s s second level. Okay. Roll to... Do you need to roll to hit, or is it a... So I need... Uh, it, it's a roll to hit, and it's a save. What? So, oh, it's both. Well, I rolled to hit the first time. Right. Uh, for a 23. Right. So you actually going to have disadvantage on that attack roll. Okily dokily. 23 is the lowest I rolled. Oh. The other one was the 26. Wow. <laughs> yeah. wow. So I do... Oh, flat. As you're six about... Six points. Yep. Oh, yes. As you're about uh, to hit uh, it, you, you're, you're about to strike your ice knife here when you see it shimmers, and you actually see that it's not where you thought it was. It's over here instead. And Ooh. so you turn your attack to this place, and you hit it. And you do how much damage? So it was initially six points of piercing damage. Yep. And then I roll one, and then can it make a constitution, a dexterity saving throw, please? Okay, dexterity saving throw. Uh, it gets a 19. Okay, so it takes seven and a half, it takes three cold damage. Okay, now it has a trait that says if this creature um, is subjected to an effect that allows it to make a saving throw to take only half damage and instead takes no damage if it succeeds on the saving throw um, and only half damage if it fails. Well, I succeed okay. anyway, so... Yeah, so it doesn't take doesn't, any damage. It doesn't take any damage, okay. All right, that was your turn. Adric? Oh, ba I'm back in? Yep. Uh, okay. uh, what about me? Leith, what are you doing? I mean, well, actually, you're um, after Adric because but you're on the other side of the wall. Oh, Am I? Okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, I am going to. Because uh, uh, logically, in Adric's head, he's like, okay, well, this thing is here for a reason. It hasn't bothered anybody. So this is like probably Alanis's dog or something. So I don't want to kill this. Uh, so I'm going to try to climb the wall. Okay. So you make an athletics check. And I believe, let me double check, I believe I get advantage on strength. There we go. Cool. And that is a strengthy boy. So roll that with advantage. Dun, 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 dun. 19. All right. 19. You, you hoof it up the wall without any trouble. Um, straight up to the top of the wall. Bump, bump, bump. You're there. And I'm going to 
go return to my small form and right. uh, jump down. All right. So, Edrin, you're still on top of the wall? Yep. Yep, okay. And it's now Leith's turn, actually. Um, and Leith, suddenly Adric appears plopping out of the sky next to you. Oh, ah, uh, ah. Uh, and he he looks very quickly at, at Edric, but then casts Levitate on himself with his staff <laughs> um, and flies directly straight upwards. Um, and I, I guess sees... Um, uh, Edrin on the wall? Uh, yes, you see Edrin on the wall. Um, you can make a perception check. Fifteen. Um, you hear various gasps from about the street. Oh, shit. <laughs> That's why I went small. Oh, shit. That wasn't wise, was it? <clears throat> and I can't, like, push myself over or anything. I need a, I need a vertical surface. Ah. So you're, like, literally just up in the air, flying, hovering. I'm going to try... Can I see like the creature over the other? Can I see over the other side of the you, of the fence? Everything on the other side of the fence looks as it was. There's nothing strange over there, right? Where you okay. are because you have not crossed the boundary. I'll, I'll I'll just go up there and go. Idrin, come down. What are you doing? Ah! Uh, as I assume, so I assume the cat is trying to. Well, the, with you standing on the top of the wall, the cat's just sitting there. It's not attacking right now. Oh. Um, is it? Is, so that's its turn? Is it just doing nothing? Yep, for now. Okay. It's what you might say it's holding an attack. Okay. I'm going to... Uh, yep. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, look down at Adric. Heads up, and I, I jump down. I, I try and to I'll catch just him. Let, I'll just let myself down. Okay, so you levitate back down again. Yeah. Slowly or quickly? As quick as possible. <laughs> so, do you just release the spell? Uh, <laughs> uh, no, I'll let myself float down, but okay. but as quickly as I can. Okay, so without taking any damage, basically. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, Ho that hoping point... that uh, hoping that to everybody on the other uh, that saw me on the street that it looks like I just jumped straight up quite spectacularly and just went straight back down again. Um, you see about four different people um, pointing at you on the street in different places, <clears throat> um, and Shit. they are spreading this information amongst themselves. Um, in little pockets, there's like four different pockets of people now discussing Amen. what they think they saw. Um, some of them are children just... who, you know, they're, they'll be easy to discount. You know, you can, <laughs> you'll be able to use your adult authority to rush rough shod I... right over them. But as for the adults, not so much. I yell at Elvis. The house is haunted. Run! <laughs> and, uh, I, I'm gonna put my um, put the hood up on my uh, on my cloak uh -huh. and just try and stealth away. Okay, so you can make a stealth check. Yep. So uh, using the because it's a, the cloak of elven kind. Um, uh. Checks made to see you have disadvantage, and you have advantage on dexterity stealth checks made to hide as the cloak's colour shifts to camouflage you. Uh, all right, so I have... doubling down on the magic. In, in order to avoid being caught for using magic, you're going to use more magic. Just check. <laughs> that's that's the plan. Okay. Yeah, but the, the, but it needs must. All right. So you make your... I rolled a six. Oh, my God. <laughs> Okay. I'm so going bom, to prison. Bom, bom. No, but use use your inspiration. 
Inspiration? Uh, yes. Yeah, I think I'm better. Yes. Okay, you roll with inspiration. So do I get do I get another you advantage get roll on no, my stealth? You just get or one, one more dice. roll on my one stealth. Okay. So that's uh that's super. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god just uh, on behalf of the three of us barry joe i'm so sorry for the three stooges act i had no, no, gonna, no idea this you're gonna happened. have to break s someone else out of a prison now <laughs> we're all just going well you dragged me into this oh, oh, hang on. He, you dragged me into this no, oh, no. he dragged me into this awesome d says leith will be missed <laughs> Mis Mr. <Mistral> Lack. Mr. <laughs> Alrighty. Uh, right. Well, um at that point you see you see two of the of the citizens um running towards the nearest guardhouse, which you can see in the distance. Um and they're just heading in that direction. So yeah, what are you gonna do? Run! You book it in the other. All right, so you're booking it. No, oh, yeah. should we? I'm asking the group. Should right. we book it in the other? So let's well, get, should you, let's we could stop and bribe them from everyone. Everyone who's running, sorry. Everyone who's running is making an athletics check now. Wait, 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 guys! Let's let's stop them and bribe them quickly. Bribe them. How do we stop them? Oh yes, please. Could you just oh, hold it on a second? Dispersed. I would like to. All right, I guess I'm running too then. <laughs> yep. Uh, nine. Right. Okay. Um. Very good. Not 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 very good. Okay. Seventeen from Adrian. Oh, seventeen okay. Adrian, fine. from Adrian. Nat seventeen oh, from Adrian. <laughs> He's like, I'm not going to jail. <laughs> <laughs> Quite so, quite so. He's just solely egged on. He doesn't need to outrun the black guard. He just needs to outrun Leaf. So Adric and oh, Edric. <laughs> fucking pace oh, no! <laughs> Duck into an alley. Just keep going. Friends! Friends! Help me! Leith. We're both just trying to drag Leaf behind us. Leaf. Time seems to slow down oh as you're beating the pavement, running as fast as you can, which doesn't seem to be very fast at all. <laughs> and um, you have this sense of hoofbeats around you. Mistralath. Yes, sir. What are you doing, Mr. Lath? I, I made a mistake. I cannot save you from this. I, I realize this. Um, I'll uh, learn from this mistake. I'll be fine on my own. Good luck, Mr. Lath. Woof. He's gone. <laughs> and now you realize that there are guards in pursuit. Oh my god! Oh. And before long, you are caught up with by um, two horseback riding <laughs> horse ho 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 the, 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 the horse riding guards, horse. Mounted guards, that's what I want to say. Mounted guards um, catch up with you. And yes, one of them's pointing a crossbow at you and the other one has a sword drawn. And they say, stop where you are. Put your hands Leith is going to stop. against the <laughs> wall, sir. Leith turns to the wall and puts his hands against the wall. What is this uh, that you're wearing, sir? We've had reports that you are wearing some sort of mystic garb. This, this, uh, this is just a cloak. It's just my cloak. Look, You've been look, seen look, flying. Uh, I, I, I was uh, 
I was just looking around. I I, I jumped What's and your name? Uh, I, it was a pretty good jump actually. Uh, uh, um, my name is Leith Mistralath. I am an acquaintance of uh, uh, Gudale Dalla Telendaran. I am one of her retinue. Um, uh, I'm afraid uh, you'll be coming with us, Mr. She, Mr. she, she, she will, she will be able to, uh, to, to, to speak to my character. I'm sure um, she will. I'm sure she I, will. I, you can, I, you can talk to her about that when we inform her after we get to the guard tower, sir. We, where are Edric and Edrin at this point? They've, they've hoofed it. They're gone around the corner. You can't see them. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I. The second time you've been arrested in two weeks. They literally Shit. left you behind. <laughs> why is why is Leith the bad boy? Because <laughs> he's just Making young and, and he's just young and gangly and inept. Milford's having a heart attack in the under <laughs> in the underdark. Yeah. In the underworld. Right, so one of these soldiers gets off his horse and um, opens up his bag and takes out these manacles. And he says, right, put your left hand behind you, sir. He and puts his left hand behind him. Long story short, they, they, uh, they, they chain you up. He, he, will go, he, he will go willingly at this point. All right. They march you back to the guard tower. <laughs> and they process you. And this will take a while. Meanwhile, Adric and Edrin. Woo! I didn't know you could run like that. I didn't either. Oh, I have not run in the like that in years. Oh, I don't like running in plates. I need to sit down. Oh. Do you guys want to make uh, Leaf. stealth How checks? How you... Leith. 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 Oh. oh. What? Stealth checks no, he's good. for Adric good. and Edrin. Dirty. Dirty 20 nice. on the stealth. Okay, you guys did good. That is a 19 and a, th a 13, sorry. A 13, okay. okay. Does that pass? Seems to pass. You believe you've passed your stealth check. Mm, okay. Do you trust Ooh. the team when he says that? No, I, no, I super don't, but I, I'm trying to decide if I want to use that inspiration I have left from last, last week or not. Would you like to use your inspiration? <laughs> what if I get a worse outcome? Well, it can uh, be worse. I mean, if it's worse, then it's, it's, you know, you take the highest roll. Oh, yeah, fair enough. Ah, uh, fuck it, why not? I'll, I'll do it. No, it's, it's five. Oh, okay, five. I have to okay. go with that 13. All right, but now your inspiration is burned. <laughs> oh, you, this was your plan all along. Of course it was. Yes. Um, all right, so. Uh, oh, where's Leith? Oh, fuck. Oh. Oh. Did we leave from behind? Everything was just a blur. It was so fast. What was that thing? I don't know. I, can't. I need to sit down. I can't quite breathe. Right? The, the, yeah, everything yeah, yeah. is spinning. Okay. Oh. Okay. Oh. We have to... Oh, Orica is never going to let me hear the end of this. Right. Oh. He's never going to let you hear the end of this. Meanwhile, Dale and Orica are sitting in the quarters of the Daughters of Twilight, and um, Lady Imdrael, Ayalanthra Imdrael, and her various attendants and attendees are assisting you to remember every detail you can, and they're drawing pictures. They have a very fancy artist um, who's drawing pictures of everything that you can describe, and you're assisting them, telling them how to, you know, what it looked like and what you can remember. And you spend most of the of a, a, the better part of about three hours doing this. Um, does that sound about reasonable to you? Sounds about right. And I imagine Gadel every now and then will be saying things like, "Orica, would you like me to call for some more food for you?" And we're very comfortable in sitting on some cushions. And right. no, me is fine, <clears throat> my lady Talandaran. Thank you. Um, and after about an hour and a half of all of this, um, there is a bell, and um, Lady Andrea has somebody, you know, go to the door and 
turns out there's a messenger. Um, messenger for you, Lady Goodale, says says one of the attendants. Oh, um, okay. From from Lady Firahel. And oh, there is a excellent. scroll case presented to you. Ah. Oh. Oh, I've been waiting for this. Thank you so much. Right. So, Orca, should we uh, return to our apartments, do you think? Oh, are we done here? Um, yes, might as well be done here, yes. If there's anything else I need, I will ask you to return. Thank you. And if I remember anything further, I'll be sure to um, come over. Very good. We will be here for a further two days, two and a half days. Excellent. Good luck with your mission. Thank you. She looks at you for a moment, Goodale, and she says, it is important to me that you succeed in both of your missions. There are personal reasons on account of all your tasks. I I cannot explain myself. I wish that I could. Good luck. Yes. Thank you very much. I do sometimes feel that all the missions are, are somehow intertw intertwined. Can't explain it. Of course. Many threads woven together. This is the weave. Very good. Light, love, liberty and light. Light, love, liberty, and light. All right, and so you go. All right, where do you go with Orica? Um, quickly back to our um, courtyard, so I can courtyard. Do yep. we have a sitting room that's not outside? Uh, you don't have a sitting room that's not outside. You each have your own rooms. Right. Um, Orica, I mean, would you duck into my room with me? I feel this might be something that is best kept private. Yes, my lady. As you okay. wish. So Goodale opens up the scroll and in, right. in the safety of her room. All right, and it says um, it is to the effect that um, you and any number of attendees up to six um, have access or have been have been granted the privilege of entering the sufferance um, upon uh, the fifth day of the wheel, which is a month, um, at which point you will be invited to attend up to five prisoners of the sufferance um, with the objective of obtaining their, um, or assisting with their spiritual needs. Um, you can spend up to an hour with each of these individuals and you will be under guard the whole time. There will be um, four red guard assigned to you um, and a boat. Um, yeah, and so you will have access, we'll say you have access for an entire day, a total of eight hours, starting in the morning at 10 o'clock um, and finishing at 6 sixth bell which will be before um, sunset mm -hmm. primary sunset yeah I wonder what the chances are that um, a lady fairhell will be able to choose the guards that perhaps would be most sympathetic to our cause we hope she's sympathetic with everything we do. Indeed. What time is it? it? Does it seem the others have been with my brother for quite a long time? It's probably an inn. It's um, not outside the realm of possibility. No, one drink like a fish. Leith, 
at the guard tower, you have been stripped yes. of all your possessions. Hmm. And you've been placed in a cell under guard. Hmm. Um, and after some time there, hmm. um, a small contingent of black guards come in. Like, the guys that caught you, they were city guards. These guys are black guards. And they come in and two of them stand at the door as sentinels and they shut the main door to the actual guard tower and everything goes very quiet. And they take you, they have the normal guards take you to a special room um, where there is a stone table and stone seats. And they take you in there and one guard, the, the black guard comes in, takes off his helmet they post two guards outside, and two guards inside the door. So you're very highly secure. And this guard says something, and he casts some kind of spell. You're sure of it. Um, you know you're you you're you're a warlock, so you know what spells look like. Mm. Um, and you see this um, zone go <laughs> around you. The sort of 15 foot radius and you see these little radiant dots of light rain down from the ceiling around you in a kind of a spherical shape um, as you're sitting on your seat your hands are manacled and he sits opposite you he says now speak to me the truth your name is Mr. Lath yes Uh, Leaf is uh, not going to say a word. If you do not speak to me, measures will be taken. Do you understand? Very good. Then measures shall be taken. He gets up. He leaves the room. Some hours are going to pass, depending on what the others do. You may or may not find yourself still in this room in another three hours. Meanwhile, Adric and Edrin. I imagine we'd get back to the back to our rooms because going so to Goodale's probably... the first thing we want to do. All right, so yes. you go back to Goodale's rooms, right, at the Temple of the Daughters of Twilight. Yep. Yeah. Okay. You get there, and um, are they there by now? I'm assuming they're there by now. Yep. Uh, Ulrika and Goodale. Okay. So Ulrika and Goodale, you hear the doors open up, and you hear the huffing and puffing of um, Edrin and Adric as they come in. Oh, boys, we've got the best news. We've got we've got our document already. We can go. Uh, oh. the, the fifth day of the wheel. Oh. That's oh good you don't seem very happy well see we were you can't thank us for that letter because we didn't manage to go and talk to Alanis well uh, you know I'll tell you the good news later the bad news is we tried to get into Alanis's estate where's Leith we were attacked but we got out. Leith performed some magic to get a look inside the estate. Gadel's thinking Leith is dead. <laughs> and some commoners, well, they overreacted. They overreacted and they called some guards. We all ran away. And us <clears throat> too, we were so uh, desperately trying to get away that we didn't realize Leith got left behind. He's left behind? <laughs> and he's not here, so... We hope <coughs> he's been arrested. We hope he's been arrested. You hope <laughs> he's Leith, been arrested? Leith doesn't seem like the person to, to you know... 
stick it out to the end for a for a pointless cause. So I, I think he would have surrendered, and well, then I, he wouldn't. You don't he wouldn't think he could have gone down an alleyway or something? I feel like he would have come straight back here. Yes. What on earth would it, I don't want to know what you were doing. Okay, um... We may have tried to break into Alanis' estate. Okay. Break it! Uh, leave a note. Leave a note for leave Alanis. A note. We hop the We hop the fence to leave a note to say, G- give us the cl- clergy thing, please. And then I was jumped by a large You cat. know something? What's that? All the people in the world call orcs stupid! All the people in the world say we stupid! Why in the city are you using what you should not be using in the city? Well, Me I didn't use all. magic. I didn't use magic. I didn't get caught using magic. I did use it, but I, I used it on the other side. We, where they we couldn't got see me. to get to uh, oh, and, jail. And also very, very important. Uh, that now the good news. We did talk yes. to your brother. And he can potentially get us into the palace, but he wants to have dinner with us for first at uh, Seventh Bell. Seventh Bell. At uh, Groomsh's Folly. Time. I know where Grim's Folly is. Fantastic. Um, could could Ayla get Leith out if Ayla is, you know, a, a decent leveled uh, black guard? Could He'd he be more willing than my father? That's for sure. Um, oh, there we go. Uh, how how much sway would Verdania have with the guards? None at all, really. Has to be. At uh, what bell is it now? Fourth bell. Fourth bell. Right, and is Ayla? Did he say how? Busy he was going to be this afternoon. Should we try to seek him out immediately, or we I think seek so. him out? I think seeking him out, yes. Okay, off we go. All right. So where do you go? Go to Ayla's. Okay. When you get to Ayla's, um, one of his servants comes out. Um, do do come inside. Come inside. Um, tea all? No, no. Is is. Uh... Uh, Master Elar here. Oh, I'm I'm afraid not. He's gone to see his his mentor, Lord Azariah, at the at the tower. I see. As People to escort us there. We, we have a bit of a, um, an emergency. Yes, very well, of course. So thank you so much, Hamil. Organise for you to yeah, Hamil. That's right. Well done. <laughs> Kind of inspiration for remembering her meal. Okay, um, so you 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 take uh, her meal and he takes you to to the tower where to Azariah's um, residency. And Azariah's servants open the doors and let you in. And after a good ten minutes of waiting, um, Azariah and um, Ayla appear and they seem quite surprised to see you all. Ayla! So... He crosses his arms suspiciously. What has happened? We are in trouble. We are in great trouble. Very well, we need to move quickly. We need to smuggle you out of the city, yes? Well, no, 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 not, 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 we're not in that much trouble yet. Yet, well, I don't see that happening. That's that's in a few days' time. Um, but no, no, uh, we the three of us, uh, Leith, myself, and Edwin, went to uh, Elanis's months. Where is Leith? Uh, he's arrested, he's been arrested by we think. What has he been arrested for? Magic, he's in magic. Yes, what was he carrying with him? I Just think his cloak, maybe his staff. No, the staff I believe is in the bag of holding. Okay, I think he I'm not had sure his how staff with him. Board. He used his staff at the time. Oh, he did use his staff. Yeah, he had the That's staff. That's what I used. Yeah. 
Um, so his cloak and his staff, I think, were, were on him, at the very least. They have experts. They will recognize these things immediately. Oh, he is, no. This is dire. Let me see. I have, I have a plan. I have a plan. Thank you, Elar. Wait here. Wait here. And do press this upon your friend, Mr. Lath. This will never happen again. I can only offer this once. This level of clemency is extraordinary. Understood? I, I, I understand. You. All right. Leith, um, it's a little while later. Hours have passed. You've been sitting in this room. There's been a couple of attempts to interrogate you, but you haven't broken. Because you're such a hard man. And <laughs> to be fair, nobody's tried that hard yet because um, they're waiting for magical reinforcements. You have the impression they're waiting for somebody who's got the nous to crack you like a nut. Um, but that person apparently is indisposed at present. And finally the person arrives, you figure, because there's a lot of hoo-ha going on, and then the door, there's a rattle and the door opens, and this hooded figure steps in, and he says, um, leave us, and the guards leave, and this black hooded figure approaches you, sits down opposite you, and then casts back his hood, and it's Alar. Oh, um, huh. I should explain. Um, huh. I'm not uh, sure you can explain this, Mr. Lath. I, I, I'm, 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 dre I'm, I'm dreadfully sorry for what, what's happened here. Um, I suspect my friends sent you, didn't they? Uh, they did. I, 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 I'm, 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 I'm dreadfully sorry for the inconvenience here. Um, well, Mr. Lath, it is fortunate that I did send you on this particular mission, whereupon we were uh, testing the efficacy, efficacy of the city's watch and their loyalty to our cause. And it seems they have passed our test, and I should like to thank you for your assistance and cooperation in helping us with this very practical examination of the city's wait, 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 systems. Wait, wait. You're, 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 you're telling me that this was some kind of a drill? Yes, of course. Wasn't it, was it not, Mr. Mr. Lath? Were you not informed that you were part of this drill? Only last night when I spoke with you and gave you this cloak and staff? Um, for this Lisa's looking, very ar specific... looking around for hidden, for hidden observational <laughs> spells or anything. Uh, I, yes. Um, uh, uh, he, he, and he kind of leans, like he's still manacled, but he, he leans forward and goes, uh, y yes. Good. Hmm. Then I shall have these manacles removed uh, immediately. Uh, and... Uh, you should congratulate the guards as you leave. You didn't uh, say anything uh, to them, did very you? Very good. No, not a thing, no. Excellent. No, then no, you played they're, your part they're, perfectly. They're, 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 they'd never break me. <laughs> oh, I see that. And I shall remember um, that in the future, if ever the need arises. Um, guards, uh, uh, calls uh, out. Uh, One of them comes in. Release this man immediately. He is um, part of my special unit. Uh, very good work, fellows. Um, uh, well, well, well done. Now um, I will have the uh, artifacts immediately taken into my care. Good exercise, yes. Excellent. I will have those in a bag. Thank you very much. And they give him a bag with the staff and the cloak and all of the rest of your belongings. And he says, now come with me, Mr. Mr. Lath. Uh, yeah, 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 yes. He leads yes, you out. Yeah, 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 very good. Uh -huh. <laughs> Just sort of um, like putting on a bit of a show for the guards that will probably be standing there looking a bit. Would you like to make a performance check, please, Mr. Mr. Lath? 
22. 22. Very good. Very good, Mr. Mr. Lath. Very good. Okay, so you, you put on a great performance for them, and they seem to have bought the whole thing. And you and Ayla appear out on the street, and he says, yes, now you need to follow me. I believe we have dinner in not very long. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. As soon as he's out of earshot of the guard tower. He turns around as you get further up the street and you get to the corner and he turns around and he says, what on earth were you thinking? I, 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 I wasn't. Why are you I, even carrying these things about? I, 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 you're quite right. I, I have no other means to defend myself. Do you think someone is going to attack you in the middle of Hemoth Tirith? This place well, is guarded um, like a fortress. There are no ruffians here. You are your own worst enemy. It would appear so. Um, I, I, I'll, uh, I, I'll keep my keep my items stowed until we are out of the city. It is probably a good idea, I suspect. How did you obtain such objects, anyhow? Um, uh, long story. I shall not long, ask. This is between very you and my sister. Story. If I want to know more, I'll ask my sister. Believe me, I don't need to hear it from you. Uh, it only makes me more of a liability than I already am, and I cannot I, I, stand I, I, it. I feel I've, I feel I've made quite the fool of myself in your eyes, um, and I, I, I can do nothing but apologize, and um, <sighs> it's been quite a day already. I hope mm. they did not mistreat you in there. I, 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 as I said, I, 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 I didn't break. Good, good. Well then, to the Grumsh's folly then, I say. Off we go. And so you all oh, converge... For, for dinner, yes. Yes, yes for dinner. Mm. So, and so you all converge at the Grumsh's folly, um, which is a very nice, um, you know... Food establishment that serves many a drink and other things. And those of you that arrived early, I'm not sure who that is. I'm assuming it's everybody else. Yeah, um, yeah but have, I imagine eagerly right? and nervously so you, waiting. Right, so you're nervously Let's... waiting when Ayla Hooded turns up with a, a rather meek looking Leith, I suspect. L Leith is looking very sheepish. They're coming through a side entrance. And you have a private room booked. Um, so you find yourselves in a private room all by your little selves, sitting together with um, Leith and Ayla. So Pat we'll... Leith on the back. You're right, Leith. Leith on the back. <laughs> Adele uh, gets yeah. in Leith's face. She's got her hands on either shoulder. <clears throat> Are you all right? I um, thought you were about to slug uh, him. I <laughs> thought you were about to... Thought you were about to, yes, give him the watch yeah. as well. Leith Le 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 actually does wince a little bit when you do that. Go, oh. <laughs> it turns um, backs up as well. Like, oh, I was yes. so worried. Um, uh, it was quite the adventure, but um, I was, uh, whew, uh, yes, it's been a day. Um, hmm. Uh, I'd rather not talk about it, actually. I, 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 I think your brother is a little bit cross with me. Um, hmm. Ayla looks at you. He says, well, to be perfectly fair, Leith, I did give you the address for uh, Ilanis Lea Firahel's manse. I took it from the records. I was not aware that you would have any trouble there but um, I do feel somewhat responsible for what must have happened. Oh, no, 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 no. I, I shouldn't have I shouldn't have been casting uh, spells like that in the middle of the street. It was, I, I mean, I'm, I'm, going to, I'm going to take the responsibility on that one myself. Good. Very good. much so. In broad daylight, yes. Yes, it, it, it was very foolish of me and I shall... I shall put my items away until we are well clear of the city from now on. Leith, if you grew up in a village where people such as my father were trying to 
control things out of you. How did you become such a powerful warlock? Well, um, it, it, it's happened since uh, I was uh, I, I was in, in the village. Um, these powers have come to me in the last year, two years since I have been uh, away from the from the collective. You've um, gained this level of power in two years. Well, yes, um, it's. Uh, it was unexpected at the time, but I, 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 I do appear to be gaining some control over it, do I not? Just not your faculties, it appears. I, I, I Me was going to say that, but... I, I, I just need to practice some wisdom around that, I, I, I guess. <laughs> yes, possibly a good idea. Now... We are all gathered here together for reason, which was not initially to be a discussion of um, Leith's foibles. Instead, we're here to discuss other things more pertinent. Now, I believe I can obtain some sort of writ, or otherwise fabricate one, that will produce the effect that you could all appear to be black guards on a mission to investigate a particular location within the palace. Um, this is predicated on the fact that if you were to come across any lower ranking black guards they would immediately um, have to essentially defer to your orders. I can make you high enough ranked that they would defer to your orders. However, if any of the members of the Black Guard above a certain rank were to discover you and question you, that would be more difficult, um, and you would have to point them back to me. So much the same rules as last time we were in. Very much the same rules as last right. time. Uh, don't look avoid... like black guards. However, you would be on an official mission, and um, they would really need to be digging quite deeply to discover your reasons for being there. You simply could explain that you were there on um, private secret business to do with um, the Inquisitor. We not look like Beckard. Well, nor do I, Eureka. I'm, I'm apparently going in as a uh, advisory. You position. would be auxiliary guards. Oh, that's even better. Yes. So this is how we would do it. However, you would need a certain amount of. Um, We'll have to get you the uniforms. We will have to get you a certain level of disguise. Your faces are too recognizable now. You've been about too much. There will be some level of magic required. And that, I believe, Azariah can assist you with. Yes? He has some form of disguise magic, which I believe he has agreed to work on your behalf. And um, when would you like to begin this operation? Tonight? Uh, how many days is it until our um, until we have to go and get Ren? It depends upon uh, that. Well, well, you've got the the letter right. Um, day of the wheel, if it means anything. Fifth day of the wheel, well, two days from now. Okay. Right. So tonight may be better. The sooner, the sooner the better, I reckon. Very well. Great. Then we shall organize this immediately. I shall speak with Azariah. Perhaps you should come with me as we speak. Um, Eat then. Eat, drink, be merry, spend some time together. This may be the last night of our lives. Who knows? 
What a thing to say silly. after the way our last trip under the waterfall ended. That's precisely why I should say such a thing, sister. Precisely why. Um, you're right if before, if we do get straight into this, uh, we pop back to our lodgings and pick up one or two items that may not be on yes. our person. Yes, of course, of course. Um, and this time, Leith, perhaps you will want to bring your things, but keep them... Um, I understand you have some form of transporting your items. Uh, yes, I, I, I will keep them on. Uh, I will keep them locked down. I will keep okay. them safe and away from uh, any potential uh, use that I might want to make of them. Very well. Very well. Now, out of game, um, those of you that have played a lot of magic users, um, I'm trying to think of what is a good spell to disguise self. Yeah, disguise self is pretty good. Less and Lufford had a hat, if anybody could remember it. That's true. <laughs> Was Milford wearing his hat? Does my... Oh. Um, I think he was because he was wearing it when he went through past the guards. Mm. Oh, that's mm. yeah. So that's gone. <laughs> I have disguised self, so if I had time to prepare, I could I could get around that. But I don't have anything that could help other people. Sadly, right. Um, um, is my glamour is my glamour armor like um, simple enough as to not be recognised as magical? If someone was looking for it, they would see it was magical. If someone cast mm. Detect Magic, it would be clearly magical. So do I still have it? Uh, do you still have it? Um, yeah. No, you had all your items taken. Oh, you do, because it's been returned to you now. Yeah, all of your items yeah. have been returned to you. So I'm not wearing it, but I could potentially use it to disguise myself as black. Yes, man. yes, you could. It's, yeah. a, it's in the bag. It's in the bag that Ayla took from the, from the cell. Um, Tim Timulus, I am assuming that's how you say it, despite it being a five at the end, because otherwise it would be Timulu five. Um, suggests try the spell seeming. So I'm going to give that a look up. Uh, did Leith also have some makeup, or did someone have makeup? Milford. Uh. Oh, was that Milford's? <laughs> of course, it was. It's got disguised. That looks so, perfect. Of that looks perfect, Timulus. Thank you, Timul Timula Five. <laughs> yep, now that looks perfect. That's the spell. Okay, so that's what Azariah is going to cast on you guys. Um, and what that will do will change the appearance of any number of creatures that you can see within range. You give each target, you choose a new illusory appearance. An unwilling target can make it blah, 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 but you're not unwilling, so that doesn't count. Spell disguises physical appearance as well as clothing, armor, weapons, and equipment. You can make each creature seem up to one foot shorter or taller and appear thin, fat, or in between. You can't change their body type, so you must choose a form that has the same basic arrangement of limbs, which is not an issue because black guards have the same number of limbs as you do. Otherwise, the extent of the illusion is up to you. Physical changes, sorry, changes wrought by the spell fail to hold up to physical inspection, however. For in, for example, you could add a hat to a creature's outfit, but objects pass through the hat. And anyone who touches it would feel nothing or would feel the creature's head or hair, etc. Make sense? What about my tusk? Uh, well, same for your tusks. Um... They can change the way your tusks look, but if somebody touches your tusks, they would be apparent to the sense of touch. It's an entirely visual illusion. Okay. Nobody touches a black guard anyway. Right. That's very unusual for someone to start touching black guards. That's true. Even black guards don't really touch black guards. Not often. Yeah, we're going to get into like a secret room, and it's just an entirely hug-based, uh, right. you know, way of uh, greeting each other it's all our initiations for duty, sir. yeah reporting for duty yeah well, that's bring her in bring her in i know bring you're very in. tough yeah. where are you yeah forgot to forgot to mention all of that all right and so um that's the plan at this point um with alar's assistance 
that's a matey fine plan. All right. Now we've got two minutes to the end of stream, so does anyone have anything else they'd like to do um, for themselves, for their characters, or otherwise? Start a bar. Go get our bag of holding. Go get your bag of holding. All right, so you go about, get your business. You prepare. Yes, Leith is going, Leith is going to place the Staff of Power and the, uh, the, the Cloak of Elvenkind and the Ring of Protection into the bag of holding. All right. And Milford slaps him in the back of their head. Right. Uh, in, in spectral the ghost hand. Milford. Spectral ghost Milford. Only Edrin sees it when he's wearing the crown. <laughs> <laughs> right. All right. Very good then. Um, so we shall pick up the stream next week at the point where you guys are entering the palace with your disguises on ready to go dungeon nice. crawling as it were yes. okay all right so um in the meantime you guys can think about what you're going to take and what you're not going to take and how you're going to take it and so on oh, and so forth I, i'm yeah. just going to spend the week thinking about what a massive mistake i made but <laughs> you know that's how lucky you are not to have been executed. <laughs> Thank you, awesome how, D. How, much appreciated. How lucky I am that my DM likes me. Yes, yes. Don't count on it. <laughs> don't count on that to work every time. I'm never gonna I'm, leave I'm this not. prison. I'm not. Right. And I appreciate how you didn't. How, how the how Tozen showed up and was like. Yeah, you're on your own on this one. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have Tosin show up because last time you guys, the whole incident with the boat in Lithlian. Yeah. Tosin turns yeah. up and he's like, okay, I'm going to save like, you. He's like, no, yeah, I'm not saving you from this again, you little Nothing. shit. This is the second time. <laughs> I already did this once. And this time you're in the middle of a city and I can't just turn up. You know, we can't have black yeah. unicorns running around in the middle of the city when you're trying to hide from the fact that you're using magic. It just kind of <laughs> exacerbates the problem. Uh, <laughs> right. Like using magic after being caught using ah. magic. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, I, but my favorite part was just seeing seeing Steve's face when I s said, you know, you hear this multiple gasps coming from various <laughs> citizens on the street. <laughs> my, my, my favorite, uh. I, I think that, that out of all the games we've done thus far, that's been my favorite segment. <laughs> it's the most D and D segment. Really? <laughs> wow. Yeah, with the, the breaking in, the oh, it, there was there was a dog. <laughs> It was so stoogy. It was just so stoogy. <laughs> um, Ren's going to commit suicide because it's the only way he's leaving here. All right. Well, that's the plan. Well, thank you all, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for watching. Hey, Mason, nice to see you back in again. No worries about coming in late. You can always watch the episode on YouTube um, or even on Twitch for the next week, I think. Um one week yeah. or two weeks. I can't remember how long they keep it up there for, and then they delete them, which is why we have mm. to move them over to YouTube. Um, so, yeah, you can always catch up if you're so interested. Um, thank you all once again. We are going to adjourn. Have a great night. And thanks to the new followers. And, and, and oh, yeah, awesome. Thank you so much for the subs once more. Awesome, man. We really appreciate that. It's huge thank you, for awesome. us. Okay, have a good night. See you Good night, everyone. Good night, everybody. Bye. Bye.